Welcome to TSC Touchdown Friday. Brought to you by TSC. GA Windsor and Son. Stolly Insurance. Owen Kitchen and Bath. And Tailgaters. Round two of the high school football playoffs here in Division Two tonight. The Trotwood Madison Rams come in 11 and 0 and take on the Wapakoneta Redskins, who enter the ball game 10 and 1 out of the Western Buckeye League. It's high school football playoff action for you. You're watching Game Face Ohio. way to pay the bills and balance the budget there couldn't be an easier way than with TSC's Total Talk Plus. With Total Talk Plus you can get Total Talk plus basic cable Total Talk plus high-speed internet or Total Talk plus basic cable and high-speed internet with costs starting as low as $59.95 per month. It doesn't get any easier than this. Talk soon. Tailgaters drive through located just south of Lincoln Avenue on Defiance Street, has the best pizza in Wapakoneta. Tailgaters drive through is hot food, cold drinks. Tailgaters drive through on Defiance Street. We've got what you're looking for. night for high school football in a fantastic setting here in Piqua. I'm Dan Hearn along with Paul Sadler and uh, Paul we have an outstanding matchup here tonight between a very talented Trotwood team and this uh, Wapakoneta Redskin team. Yeah two state ranked tanks teams here Dan. Uh, we have Wapakoneta ranked 10th in the state of Ohio and we also have Trotwood Madison the number one ranked team in the state of Ohio loaded with lots of college talent. Uh, you know, sh should be a tremendous matchup here and a tremendous challenge for the Redskins. Let's take a look at the AP ratings before the start of tonight's ball game. As you as you mentioned, both of these teams are ranked. Yeah, again, uh, Trotwood Madison, uh, last year's state runner-up team, uh, looking to try to uh, seal the deal and uh, finish. You know what they started last year. Last year, not only did they make the state final game, they actually had quite a large lead uh, in the second quarter. I think they led by about three touchdowns and let that game slip away to Maple Heights. Uh, so, obviously, you know, this is their next step, and uh, the Wapakoneta Redskins are going to try to, you know, win their second ever, or, or try to advance uh, with their second ever win in the playoffs. The Rams are 20-1 and one in the last two seasons. That lone loss was in the championship game. The kick is away. It'll be fielded by the Redskins up around the 11-yard line, across the 20 to the 15-yard line, and out of bounds on the far side near the 30. Okay, and this the Wapaka Red Redskins are being led onto the field uh, by their big-time running back, Connor Pickens. Uh, the senior led the Western Buckeye League in touchdowns this year and was third in rushing yards. He had an outstanding game last week at Franklin, 26 carries, 193 yards, and three touchdowns in that ball game. And it was his running, particularly an early big run, that really got their offense going. Yeah, and they might have their work cut out for them here, though, Dan. They're going against the largest l defensive look they've ever seen. You know, they might not get those really long plays, but what they're going to need to do is, you know, a little bit of this. You know, pound it out, get three, four yards of carry if they can. There's the quick handoff to Pickens, who picks up a couple behind his offensive line, and here's that. Starters for Wapaka. Uh, led by number 54, Chris Schwartz, you know, captain for this Wapakoneta Redskin uh, team. Also, Mason City, uh, the only sophomore we should mention, you know, will kind of lead the way on lead blocks by pulling a, a lot for this Redskin offense. 
two yards on that first down pickup brings up a second down at eight as we are just underway here at Piqua. Gibson under center has the two backs behind him and one wide out to the far side and again Connor Pickens with the handoff he goes off to the right and another couple of yards. So we'll look at the offensive star, uh, skill players here for the Redskins led by a uh, junior quarterback Kyle Gibson in his second year um, as a starter also uh, Alec Temple into the starting lineup the 6'9 sophomore at tight end. So a third down at five coming up. Wapak, their offense rides on the shoulders of their running game. They're going to need to be successful uh, in that category if they're going to come away with a win tonight. And so far, they've had positive yards. Yeah, but not positive enough. You know, they need to get, you know, three, four yards of carry, not, you know, two yards of carry. That's just not going to be enough for them. And uh, Wapak trots on their punting team. So a fourth down and three coming up for the Skins. They will kick it away to the Trotwood Madison offense. Good snap and the kick is away. It'll be fielded near the 35 yard line and quickly buried at the 33 is the return man. I think that was James Winchester. On the return, junior wide receiver. Again, leading this offensive lineup out for the Troutwood Madison Rams. Uh, quarterback number one, Mike Simpson, uh, threw for over 2,000 yards in the regular season. He's a 6'3, 215 pound uh, senior, and uh, he's got a lot of beef in front of him, as we'll eventually talk about. And we see him under center, has two receivers to the near side right, and an I formation behind him. Handoff. And a few yards up the middle, up to about the 38-yard line. And yep. the Rams are used to big starts. Um, we see the statistics there on uh, Mike Simpson. Um, you know, they're used to big starts. You know, they had four touchdowns in the first five minutes, seven seconds against their uh, playoff opener against Hamilton Ross last week. Two receivers wide to the near side on a second down and seven. And again, the handoff. Green across the 40 to the 41, still on his feet, and finally brought down as he gets up to the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at that big, beefy lineup that you talked about. In oh, front and, of. and they're big. There's two 300-plus pounders, uh, led by number 72, L.J. Mosley. Uh, you know, he's a big-time Division One recruit on that offensive line. But just going through, you got 278, 312, 288, 267 is the smallest guy. Uh, Jordan Ash, number 70, uh, number 77. Just a lot of beef. Third down and two coming up for the Rams. There's a handoff. And again, Green, this time to the right across midfield. Finds some room across the 40 to the 30. And he's going to get deep into Walpock territory. They finally brought down at the 17-yard line. Yeah, just uh, found a scene there just off of right tackle. Uh, There's no outside support, as we can see here on this replay. Uh, just being buried there by L.J. Mosley on the outside but for the Redskins led to the big play there for Green. Good look at that on the replay. Now a flag's come down as the Rams get up to the line of scrimmage here. Yeah, it looks like they really wanted to ride that momentum after, you know, getting the big play. They wanted to keep the Redskins on the heels. However, it does not appear that they were start. They were set. You mentioned their good start last week, and at the half, they had more points uh, than Ross had total yards. Whew. They had 41 points at the half, and Ross had 34 yards total in the first half. Yeah, very impressive looking team. Simpson under center on a first and 15, takes the snap, back to pass. Looking, drops it out into the flats, and it's incomplete off the hands of his intended receiver, Darian Heath. And here's the skill positions. Uh, we've already seen Israel Green quite a few times. We should mention Dalen Bird, who had a big game, their last game of the uh, regular season against Butler, uh, where he caught over uh, 100 yards uh, in pass receptions. So with the incompletion, a second down and 15 coming up. 8.22 left here in the first quarter. Trotwood knocking on the door, and they will come out with five wide here as Simpson works out of the shotgun. He is back to pass, looks to the near side, and it's caught. Short game. If 
if any at all. He gets up close to the 21-yard line, it looks like. And we're going to see the front here, but just want to bring up an important point that uh, Dan and I had kind of talked about off camera. You know, after we saw the Rams come out and run the ball with a lot of success, I kind of mentioned to him, it's like, I really think that the best case scenario is if the Rams come out and throw because the pass defense is one of the strengths of this defense uh, for the Redskins. Again, with the five wide on a third down at 14. Simpson out of the shotgun. Looking to his left, fires it over the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. Overthrew his intended receiver. He was looking to connect with Bam Bradley near the five-yard line. So here's some more defensive starters here, uh, led by number uh, 24, Brent Wilson, you know, one of the leading tacklers on the team. Also, Connor Metz, someone to keep an eye on uh, to make some big plays on the edge. So a fourth and 14 coming up for Trotwood. And they will again go with the five wide. They have not had a lot of success in this five receiver set. But Simpson again works out of the shotgun. Has time, fires it over the middle again. This time complete, down to the two. And that's where he's brought down. Bam Bradley on what looks to be the exact same play as the last one. Yeah, and... Uh you know, Alex Grevy was the free safety, kept backpedaling, backpedaling at some point, especially when you're in the end zone, you see a guy coming at you, you need to come up a little bit sooner to be able to make the play. If you get in there and you're just able to knock the ball down, you know, you gain possession, you can see him coming up from, you know, about four or five yards deep in the end zone. You know, that's way too much cushion in that part of the field. So Bradley with the reception sets up a first and goal at the two-yard line. And now they go back to the eye, the handoff, and the dive into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, you know, Wapak was able to kind of withstand, you know, the three plays, but then the long pass play to get him down, uh, you know, for the easy touchdown. You know, if they're going to be able to pull off this upset against the number one ranked team, they're going to have to be able to, you know, not give up the big plays. Ashton Jackson with the diving touchdown. Puts the Rams on top 6-0, and here's the extra point attempt. Hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. So with 7-10 remaining here in the first quarter, the Rams get on the scoreboard first and lead 7-0. You're watching high school football playoff action on Game Face Ohio. you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. Back here at Piqua, and the Rams out to a 7-0 lead over Walpock as they put together a, a nice scoring drive on their first possession of the game. Yeah, we'll get the summary here after the kickoff. Fielded by Walpock around the 10-yard line, back across the 20, up to the 21-yard line. Oh, and and a big hit. Alex Grevy with the uh, return there. Uh, drive somewhere on that touchdown, uh, eight plays, 65 yards in two minutes and 56 seconds. Uh, Ashlyn Jackson finished off with two yards rushing. However, Israel Green had 47 yards rushing on that drive and is keyed by the fourth and 15 conversion uh, on the 20-yard pass play from Simpson to Bam Bradley. Saw the replay there of that hit on Greevy and it did not look comfortable. So the Walpock offense will get another shot here. Gibson under pressure, rolls out, under more pressure, and he's going to be sacked. Back inside the 10-yard line to around the 7. And you definitely want to avoid negative plays. Um, here you see the front starters here, uh, led by Trey Williams-Brown, uh, number 17 defensive end. Again, he's another one of the major college recruits um, on this Ram defense. What could be a bad combination for the Redskins is that they have been known to get off to a slow start 
that's the opposite of what Trotwood seems to do. They seem to get off quick. And now a second down at 23. And a handoff will go up the middle for little or no gain. Here we see the linebacker starters, um, led by middle linebacker Mike McCray, again, big time Division I college recruit. And you'll hear that once again. <laughs> Third down to 23 now as we hit the six minute mark here in the first quarter in Piqua. Two receivers set, Gibson under center. He is back to pass, getting pressure. We'll fire it out to the right side and overthrew his intended receiver on the far side. And that was too bad because Kraft actually did have a step and you know, they're gonna probably have to hit some big plays to potentially uh, compete, especially if they fall behind. Uh, there you see the defensive back starters, Bam Bradley, who uh, scored the touch, uh, scored the big play. Um, and also Cameron Burroughs and uh, Rion Dawson, all uh, again, highly recruited players. Redskins will have to punt out of their own end zone to get the kick away, pretty good kick. It'll be fielded at the Trotwood 45 yard line. To the far side of the field, across midfield and into Redskin territory at the 40. Still on his feet at the 30 and finally brought down inside the 30 at the 28-yard line is Mobley. Senior wide receiver with an excellent return. Sets up Trotwood with another scoring opportunity. Yeah, and this is definitely not what the Redskins wanted to do to start. Uh, you know, this is not like, you know, the team that played last week with Franklin. You know, th this is a very loaded, talented team that if they really wanted to compete, they need to maintain time of possession, get those long drives. Um, we do see a flag down. And a, a penalty has been called. It looks like it's a, it's a personal foul. Personal quite foul frankly, I didn't Trotwood. see if, if it was uh, roughing the punter. I didn't punter even see or, the flags. Uh, it was definitely a late flag, but a, a huge break for the Redskins as they're going to get the ball back. Right. Uh, you know, I was going to mention the Rams actually had two blocked punts last week. Um, uh, just to mark up something else that they normally do well. But, you know, big, big break here for the Redskins. And hopefully maybe they can get a chance to recompose themselves and get together uh, a long drive. Well, they get second life. Ball at the 23-yard line, first down at 10. Here's the handoff. It'll go up across the 25 to the 26-yard line. And again, that's not exciting, but that's what they need. They need a minimum of three-yard gains. You know, Coach Fry will take three to four-yard gains and move the sticks. Keep the clock running. Make this a lower possession game. You know, they can win a type of game if it's a lower possession game. If it's going to be a scoring contest, they're probably not going to have the firepower to stay with the Rams. Three yards on first down. Brings up a second down at seven. Gives it under center. There's the handoff around the far side. And stacked up at the line of scrimmage. May have gotten the yard on the carry. And that was Wendell. That much there. Looked like he was taking off his speed on the far side. Look at the hell a lot of guys can do this. Uh, you know, we didn't really talk about the size of uh, their defensive front. But uh, again, Williams Brown's 240, Powell's 311, uh, Reese's 289, Hairston 259. Just to, uh, again, a lot of size. Gate of three on the play, third down and four now, ball 29 yard line. Gibson with the handoff, and that play stiffed out quickly as Grevy is going to be shut down in the backfield. Yeah, inside linebacker Mike McCray, we kind of featured him when we talked about the linebacker shooting in um, on that counter play. And you know, the big time break that the Redskins got is all for naught as they are at punt formation once again. So on a fourth and seven, the Skins will kick it away. Low step, but the kick is away. Another pretty good kick. This one fielded in the 36 and a shorter return. Stops Trotwood at the 44-yard line. Mobley again with the return. When it's early and you still got to play with confidence and uh, you know have uh, you know confidence in your abilities. However, you, you get the feeling that it's important that the Redskins show that they can at least stop this team. Uh, you know, last week we mentioned how they kind of scored at will against Ross, but they scored quick. 
Uh, you know, their first five possessions were all touchdowns, and it was five plays, touchdown, three plays, touchdown, one play, touchdown, five plays, touchdown, five plays, touchdown. <laughs> Mix in there a blocked punt for a touchdown. You know, it, it was over pretty early last week. Right. Two receivers wide to the far side. Simpson will be under center. Three forty left here in the first quarter, and he is back to pass. Fires it deep down the left side. This one is nearly picked off, but a nice play by the receiver over there on the far side. I believe that was McCray. Nope. Winchester, perhaps. And number seven, uh, Dalen okay. Bird. Um, Kraft was in terrific position, running step for step uh, again. The All-State defensive back. Uh, you know, he's tested last week. This time, you know, he's in perfect position. Uh, Bird had to become the defensive back himself to knock that away. Uh, again, I feel matchup-wise, you know, they can probably handle themselves in the passing game. Two receivers to the left. Simpson again under center. And again back to pass. He's under pressure. Escapes to the near side. He's going to run it across the 40. Five across midfield and into Wapak territory down to the 44-yard line and should be enough for a first down. Yeah, we saw that with Matty Mock in week 10 against Kenton. You know, he can provide great coverage downfield, but it's always discouraging if that quarterback is able to run and scramble and get not just positive yards, but in this case, a first down. Do you think that was a designed run on that player? Did he decide to make that, that run? Well, you know, he just saw the opening, and a lot of those guys, you know, they want to look downfield, get their teammates involved, and get the big play. However, you know, he got it th that seam and felt that he could pick up the first down, and you're always the safer way to go ahead and take it. He's back to pass again. Under pressure. Escapes, lobs it to the near sideline, and uh, throws it out of bounds. And, and that should be intentional grounding. In, in high school, they do not have that rule where if you're outside the pocket, and there's the flags. Uh, they do not have that rule if you're outside the pocket, you can just throw it out of bounds. There has to be a receiver in the area. Uh, so that, that's uh, a pretty, no doubt, intentional grounding flag there. Seemed like it still took a while for the flags to come out on that. Well, there's communication between the officials just to make sure that there was nobody over there. And, and again, I appreciate you know officials when they do try to communicate to get the correct call. So that's the second penalty against Trotwood here, and it comes with three minutes to go here in the first quarter. So it'll be second down and 27 coming up. We'll get a big break right here, but we need the Redskins to be able to see that they can maintain it, and you see uh, Trotwood now going to their uh, no-back formation. They went with five wide. And it took them three plays to make a connection on the five wide receivers set their last time out. And this time incomplete, throwing to the backside of Mobley on the far side. Yeah, it's actually, uh, you know, kind of a nice attempt by Mobley. The ball was thrown uh, low and behind him, and he almost came up with it with the one-handed grab. Um, this brings up a, a second, third, and long that we've seen. Ex actually, uh, I guess it was the fourth and long they executed and picked up the first down in the first drive. Uh, but it's very important for the Redskins to get a stop here uh, just to show that they can stop this powerhouse offense. Again with the five wide and Simpson out of the out of the gun. He's back to pass, getting pressure straight up the middle. Escapes, lobs it down the right side, and this one is going to be caught inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. And Cameron Burrows. Uh, and I tell you what, that's a backbreaker. You, you had uh, pressure on Simpson. Uh, Knippen came free. He was unable to get him. Then almost another guy, I think it was Smurgy, almost got him. Uh, but instead, he's able to you know, hit Burroughs up the right-hand sideline in, in perfect position, just right behind um, the cornerback and before Grevy got over. Boy, the third penalty flag coming out here. This is the second full start penalty against this Trotwood Rams team in this first quarter. Well, they tried to do this last time. They got that big run uh, that got them down about this area in the field last time, and they wanted to go no huddle and just attack. You know, that seems to be kind of their momentum. Uh, they've had 41 yards and penalties already. Um, however, you know, they still, you know, have shown that, you know, the Redskins haven't stopped them yet. First down at 15 now, ball to Redskins 26 yard line with 246 to play first quarter. Simpson 
We'll hand it off to Green, who goes off the left side, inside the 20 to the 15, and now down to the 11-yard line. Another nice run by Green. You know, it's discouraging for uh, the Redskins is Brendan Wilson was in the backfield to make the play, but he ran into uh, their big fullback, number 44, 45, Darian Heath. How would you like a six foot, 258 pounder <laughs> in the backfield lead blocking for you? Yep. There you see uh, that run by Green. And Paul, I'm a, a little confused about the amount of passing that Troutwood has done so far in this game because they've been so effective at running the ball. Well, you know, I'm sure that's their MO. Simpson is an accomplished quarterback. And, um, you know, they, they've shown that they've been able to make plays out of the passing game as well. So you, they haven't, you know, completed a high percentage. But, you know, it's definitely into their personality. He's back to pass and under pressure again. Lobs it into the end zone. And that one a little bit too tall for the intended receiver. There's a lot of white jerseys over there. Uh, again, to, to me, from what I've seen, I, I think the best play is I, I would still, I would want Trotwood passing the ball. You know, you got DBs who are able to, you know, make plays and might get a, you know, interception between Greavy, Crawford, Kraft. You know, those guys are all capable of making big plays, you know, if they continue to put the ball up in the air. Uh, if they continue to try to pound the ball with their size advantage and, you know, and just use their athleticism, you know, that, that's going to be tough for the Redskins to kind of make up. They go back to the I formation here with the receiver to each side. And on a second down to 10, Simpson into the end zone and broke it up. Tried to connect with Mobley here on the near side of the field, but the pass incomplete brings him a third down. Yeah, and that was broken up by the freshman, number 14, Cody Morgan, uh, making the play right there um, on the defensive end. You know, that's one of the few defensive backs I didn't even mention. Uh, again, it's a very talented group. Uh, for the Redskins, which, uh, granted, you know, their whole defense has been pretty successful this year. Um, however, they, they just haven't seen this kind of size, you know, all year long. They've pretty much been the bigger team against almost everybody on their schedule. And when you have, when you face an offense that throws five receivers at you, that stretch your defensive backfield a little bit farther. Simpson again, back to pass. Over to the near side. Caught, and then caught again. And wrestled out of bounds is Bradley on the near side down to about the six yard line. So a fourth down coming up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Trotwood decides to do here with head coach Maurice Douglas, uh, former NFL player, by the way. Um, you know, is, is he going to uh, kick a field goal and try to go up 10? Or are they going to try to go for and get in the end zone and go up two touchdowns? Looks like he's keeping his offense on the field. And this so, is a huge moment in the game, Dan. Right. Fourth down and five. They can actually get a first down without getting into the end zone. And they go with the five wide receiver set. Simpson back to pass. Toward the left side, and that one's incomplete. And that is a big stop for the Redskins. You know, they're, they're not going to have very good field position, but they were able to stop this juggernaut offense a little bit short with Kraft, you know, knocking the ball away there in the end zone. Here's another look at it, and you'll you'll see right here at the end a great play by Kraft to swat that one away. So now the Redskins at a huge uh, disadvantage here in total yards. Uh, Troutwood now has 142 net yards, and Wapak has negative three. You know they need to be able to turn that around. Here's the handoff, and Pickens is going to turn that number around. He's still on his feet at the 30-yard line. Finally brought down as he gets to the 35. And that's exactly what the Redskins needed to get this offense going. Now there's a late flag just got thrown there on the far side. We'll see what that is. But that's definitely what they needed to be able to get out of the shadow of their own goal post. Um, and, you know, once they've shown that they can score, let's see what's called here. <laughs> so just a sideline warning here. Um, obviously the Redskins pretty excited after that big play. You know, getting the defensive stop and now to get, you know, about a 30-yard run. Um, you know, again, it's great to get those long runs, but I don't think you can count on it against this defense. Right. You need to be able to get, you know, the positive plays and the consistent positive plays. So 145 left first quarter, and the Redskins will come to the line of scrimmage with a first down at their own 36. Gibson under center has one receiver wide to the near side. And a handoff to Pickens off the right. Gets up around the 38-yard line. 
Yeah. And normally we and normally we rave about the offensive line of Walpaw uh, because again they they are a good sized group. However, you know for probably the first time all year they're going against a, a defensive front that's bigger than even they are. So they're not getting the push that they normally do. Second down at eight now. Hand off off the right. That's a miracle with the carry. And he'll get a, about three yards up across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. And this is where they need to be. Uh, you know, you got third and about three, about a long three, possibly four. Um, but they're 0 for 3 on third down conversions because they've been too far away. They need to consistently get those three, four yard carries to set up a third and short. This is probably still a little bit longer than they would want, but it is at least makeable. 30, excuse me, 28 seconds left here in the first quarter as Gibson under center. And he's going to keep it himself. And he's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. May have gotten a yard, possibly two. But the official on the near side looks like he's spotted with just a gain of a yard. So a fourth down coming up now. And for the position on the field and how things are going, Doug Fry not sending his punt team on the field, at least not yet. You know, he might feel that, you know, so what if we give the, if we don't get it, we turn the ball over here. You know, we might go for it. Well, after one quarter of play here at Piqua, the Trotwood Rams have a 7 nothing lead. You're watching high school football playoff action on Game Face, Ohio. Let Amy Holdgrieve Photography capture those special moments with the ones you love. Visit our online gallery at amyholdgrieve.com. Stadium in Piqua, Ohio. And the Trotwood Rams with a 7-0 lead after one quarter of play. And Paul, if you look at uh, how much offense the Rams have put together in that first quarter, the Skins are, are lucky to be down only seven points. They sure are. You know, they've had opportunities, two opportunities, where it was a fourth and long and a third and long where they could have gotten a stop and gotten decent field position, but they were unable to stop the Rams in those cases. Luckily for them, they did get the stop on the last fourth down play, got a long run by Pickens to get back up into a decent field position. Now they have a fourth down of their own, and the offense is coming out for Doug Fry. So a fourth and two. And a conversion here on fourth down would go a long way for the morale of this Redskins team. And you can see the Rams just, you know, kind of really bunching up in the middle, looking for, you know, between the tackles play. Gibson under center. And it might just be, oh, there's the handoff. It'll be Greavy coming to the near side. He'll dive and he's going to be close. It'll depend on this spot. We'll have to see where they put it down. And I think he got it. The second effort, you know, he was hit. You know, well behind the first down marker uh, by, I believe, um, Mike McRae, their leading tackler. And we can see it here on the replay. You know, he's hit by a couple different guys, uh, by Van Bradley, again, another big-time recruit. And he was able to lunge forward to get that first down and, you know, again, to maintain possession and keep that Rams team off the field. Looks like McRae got shaken up a little bit on that play, but he's walking off. Yeah, he's only 6'4", 238. <laughs> but he's only a junior, too, so he's got room to grow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that the coaches are hoping he'll beef up a little bit. But, again, he, he's another one of those featured uh, players. He's being recruited heavily. Good conversion for the Redskins as they come to the line. First down at 10. Hand off Pickens to the right. Excuse me, to the left. He'll get up to midfield. Gain of three on the play. Yeah, it's a straight dive play right there. Not getting the push off the left-hand side that they really like. Still, you know, able to get about, you know, two yards, possibly three. Um, still, they'd like to get a little bit more. they got to have third and short against this team. Got to have third and short. They are running uh, time off the clock. And 
And Gibson will be under center. Has one receiver wide to the left. Keeps the ball himself. Across midfield, gets up to about the 48-yard line. So, as we take a look at first quarter statistics. And statistically, you know, totally dominated by uh, the Rams. And really, that 30-yard run by... Um, Pickens really kind of salvages the total yard battle, total yardage battle. Um, the Redskins, obviously, time of possession will be important for them. They want to keep the ball out of the hands of the Rams as much as possible. And if even if they get some uh, positive yards here, not surprised to see Coach Fry look at this as four down territory again. Third and four here. And a handoff to Pickens up the middle. He's close to another first down. Yeah, and it's very close, but it looks like the spot is going to be enough to for the first down. Kind of quick hit and play uh, for the Redskins, and it is indeed a first down. This is the kind of drive that you talked about earlier, Paul, that they needed to put together. Yeah, They've they, already run a couple of minutes off the clock here. They need 10, 12, 15 play drives that end in points to keep the Rams off the field, shorten the game, and eventually just kind of wear this team down. You know, the, the, this Troutwood Madison team hasn't been challenged a whole lot this year. They've only had one really tight game, and that was against Piqua earlier this year where they only won by three. Here's the handoff. Uh, the wingback, Kevin Kraft with the carry. He got maybe a yard, not much there. They'll call it second down to nine. Ball at the 42-yard line on the Trotwood side of the field. So, so far, the counter play has been run twice and, and normally is a big play for the Redskins, unable to, you know, crack, you know, the, the speed and athleticism of this Ram defense so far. Gibson under center. Here's the handoff, and Pickens will take it up to the 41-yard line, but he is met quickly. Yeah, if we were worried about Mike McRae, you know, kind of gimping off the field, he, he's okay. Right. <laughs> it looks like he's more than okay. Good stop there by McRae. And you can see why he's being recruited the way he is. Yeah, so uh, it, definitely not where you want to be in here. You know, third and, and a long eight. Uh, even if you're in their territory, you know, you definitely want to pick up at least half of this on this play. And gives it back to pass. He's got pressure. He lobs it out to the left. It's caught by Pickens. And he's run out of bounds short of the line of scrimmage. So a loss on the play. It looked like they were setting up a screen there. Yeah, they were. And the pressure got to him. And you're going to get pressure on a screen pass. However, there's so much pressure. It threw off the timing. And by the time he was able to gather himself and throw the pass, the Ram, Rams had sniffed out the screen. And because it was a negative play, uh, the Redskins are going to punt. So Holtz Apple will be able to put it away on a fourth and 12. He's had a few good punts already tonight. And another good one here. This one will hit inside the 15-yard line, fielded at the 11, and brought back across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And Mobley again with another nice return. He looks like a dangerous return man. Yeah, because they actually had him dead to rights, um, you know, fielding the ball off the hop. And normally that's a no-no. Um, but, you know, he was able to make a guy miss, sidestepped him, and make a nice little return. The coach will excuse it if you take take it back for 15 yards, I guess. 8.29 left in the half. 7 nothing. Trotwood on top, and they have the ball. Two receivers here for Simpson under center. And the handoff coming to the near side. And I believe that was Ashton Jackson up across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And that'll be 11 yards at a first down. And if we can see a, a replay on that one, I'm not sure if we will or not, but fullback Darian Heath just absolutely decleated. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get a chance to see it. Uh, we'll just see kind of uh, the aftermath. Uh, just wiped out the linebacker uh, for the Redskins. It's the uh, sixth first down of the night for Trotwood. They hand it off again. Jackson across the 40 to the 42. And they have been running the ball effectively all night. Yeah, they sure have. You know, uh, that time Jordan Ash, you know, the small little pup on their d offensive line, six foot 267, uh, pulled and led the way on that play. Shouldn't he be a fullback? <laughs> 
Two receivers here, Simpson at the line. On a second down and five. Hands off, Jackson off to the right. He'll get three yards up to the 44 yard line. And Jackson is the, uh, he's not the starter. He's the second straight tailback. Yeah, they got some death there, but that time Brandon Miller came up from his middle linebacker spot and uh, kept that to a minimal gain. Brings up a third down and short. And again, we'll kind of see if the Redskins can carry over this momentum they got from stopping the Rams on the previous, pl uh, previous possession. Seven minutes to play in the half. Simpson under center. He will hand it off. Jackson to the right side, and he's going to get the first down and more across midfield to the 49-yard line. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but carried the defenders for six more yards. Yeah, great show of strength right there uh, to be able to continue just to move the tacklers forward to not only get the first down, but pick up a really nice game. Yeah, there you see the run. There you see the contact right at the line of scrimmage. And then you see him carrying the defender for five yards. Out of the shotgun is Simpson. He is back to pass. Looks to the near side. Caught up around the 40-yard line. And brought down at the 39 is Dalen Bird. Again, I still think that that is to the Redskins' advantage. When they get in the shotgun and want to throw, I, I know Simpson's very capable and they can get big plays. Um, but, you know, they haven't shown they've been able to really stop their running game at all. But they have shown that at least at times they can stop their passing game. Yeah, they've had more inconsistency in the passing game anyway. Simpson back to pass, has all kinds of time, fires it out left side, and it is caught and then dropped near the 10-yard line. Yeah, yeah Brendan Wilson in position right there. You're kind of worried that he didn't get his head around to see the ball because he was in position to be able to knock the ball down before. Almost a really nice catch, um, but Wilson was able to recover and knock the ball away uh, to bring up... Um, It'll be a second down a second down. Again, Simpson out of the shotgun. And a handoff to Green. He'll go up to the line of scrimmage. Met there and brought down after a gain of a couple. They don't seem to go back and forth uh, offensively from passing to throwing down to down. They seem to lock in on either throwing or, or running. Yeah, it's kind of like the personnel that they like out there. Uh, you know, they have their uh, spread personnel out there. We're going to go spread. We have our eye personnel out there. We're going to go eye. Um, and, you know, really the fullback kind of dictates that. If Heath's in the game, they're going to be eye formation. If, if he's not, they're not going to be in the eye formation. They're going to be in the shotgun spread. Third down at seven. And it'll be Simpson to carry it. He goes off the left side across the 30 and brought down as he gets to the 27-yard line. Making the 26 and another Trotwood first down. Yeah, Simpson's shown once again that he can hurt you with his legs. Uh, this time running kind of the read option um, out of the shotgun. Kind of a play that's really been popularized over the, past, the last 10 years. Uh, picking up a, a big time first game, a big gain uh, for the first down. Yeah, had a good job coming off the left side there for Simpson. We see a kind so. of an equipment issue there. Um, Marquise Valentine, uh, one of the two 300-pounders that they have on the offensive line coming over to get his helmet looked at. And again, uh, shot one able to convert on a third down and long. Simpson under center now. Handoff Green. He's got room to the right, to the 20, to the 15, down to the 10, and into the end zone for the touchdown. Israel Green with a 26-yard touchdown run. And Trotwood gets into the end zone for the second time. Yeah, this running game really starting to, uh, you know, exert itself here for Trotwood. Uh, just running off tackle right there again. You know, that um, fullback, you know, leading the way there again. And uh, it's just showing that they can score, you know, off big plays and even in tight quarters. That's his sixth carry, and he's at 90 yards on the night. A robust 15 yards of carry, Dan. That's quick math. Here's the uh, extra point, and it's no good. So that uh, maybe the only miscue so far for Trotwood. 
as they lead to 13 to nothing. 5-12 remaining here in the first quarter. You're watching Game Face Ohio on TSC. Owen Kitchen and Bath Showroom has been family owned and operated since 1990. We can help you from start to finish with your entire project. Let one of our professional designers put the final touches on your project. Owen Kitchen and Bath now has two showrooms to better serve you in Wapakoneta and Lima. Owen Kitchen and Bath, cabinetry that will take your breath away at prices that won't. Welcome back into Alexander Stadium. 13 to nothing, Trotwood with the lead. And although Trotwood's offense has been very impressive so far, it's only a 13-point lead. Well, that's the way that you have to look at it. You know, with five minutes left here to go in the half, it is imperative that they keep Trotwood with 13 on that scoreboard. If you can score, that's obviously even better. But the most important thing is you got to keep them at 13. And if you can get a touchdown and, and be within shouting distance going into halftime, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Well, the Redskins will start out at their own 20-yard line as uh, – Cosby boomed that one through the back of the end zone. Yeah, uh, drive summary there, uh, nine plays, 77 yards, uh, three minutes and 17 seconds. So again, that offense isn't known for stringing a lot of uh, plays together, so you know, kind of credit the Redskins for you know, making them have to work for it. Uh, Israel Green uh, with that 26-yard touchdown run. So Walpock will bring their offense back out into the field. They come with two receivers, though. We see Gibson work out of the shotgun. He's going to run it off to the left side, and he gets maybe a yard. And see, the problem that they're getting is they're getting stoned at the point of attack by the defense. You know, that's why, the, you know, they're only getting, you know, one to two yard gains at times when they're used to getting a little bit more. And you really have to credit that, you know, to pretty much just to the size of uh, the defensive front. We got two two receivers out to the left. Now they'll move over to the near side right on a second down and eight. Now they bring a third receiver over there. And Gibson lobs it out to the near side. It's going to be caught. And a quick stop, though. That's minimal yardage for Kevin Kraft. I believe that was McCray that came over there to make the stop. Yep. Actually, I actually think it was James Winchester that kind of came up and made that play. Uh, you know, the defensive backfield is just so, is so talented uh, for the Rams. And this brings up a third and long, which has not been kind so far to the Redskins. And they will come out with three receivers to the left. Gibson out of the shotgun. He's going to run it on the draw. He has the 25 to the 30 and should have the first down to the 32-yard line. Yeah, that's the second time they've ran that formation, and what that accomplished was to get some bodies out of the box, and sometimes that's as important as anything, especially when you have such a big and fast team. You know, spread them out a little bit. So tremendously executed play and great call. 3.35 left first half. Gibson again out of the shotgun. He's worked exclusively out of the gun on this drive. Hand off and stuffed at the line of scrimmage is picking yeah and there's a host of them right there but again um number nine mike mccray coming up from his middle linebacker spot i kind of watched him from the beginning of the play he was right over the center um in his linebacker spot and basically as soon as the ball was snapped he started to coming up and it wasn't a blitz he just sensed that that's where the ball was going to go and he was right so it brings up a second down at 10 and again the Redskins come out with three receivers wide to the left. Out there, and the pass caught, but immediately stuffed out by Winchester. He has been all over the uh, the receivers on the far side. Kevin Kraft again shut down on that play. Yeah, running the bubble screen right there. Uh, you really have to get that first guy blocked, and if they would have gotten him blocked, they did have some uh, room to make a play, uh, but, you know, it, it, there's a lot of pressure on that wide receiver to get his partner you know, free for that first couple uh, yards. So the passing game has not been real effective for Wapak. Here's Gibson looking for time, rolling out to the near side, fires it over the middle, 
And a pass is tipped and intercepted by McCray. Flags come down as McCray goes to the far side of the field down to the 20 to the 18 yard line. And we'll see if that stands as an interception. Yeah, we'll see what the flag was. He It was thrown pretty early, and it appears that he's uh, signaling a pass interference call, which would be a huge break for the Redskins. Let's take another look at this one. We see Gibson being flushed, trying to make a play. Throws against his body. You know, kind of came just maybe slightly a little bit early in the judgment of the officials. So especially at this point in the game with, you know, just the two-minute mark, we talked about, you know, keeping that number at 13 for the Rams. You know, by maintaining possession off that penalty, they keep the 13 on the board there. They keep the ball in their hands. Obviously, still, you want to get points and love to get points. But, again, as important as anything, you know, keeping the Rams' offense off the field. So with two minutes to go and a half, that is the fifth penalty for or against Trotwood. They've been penalized for 56 yards. Here's Pickens coming to the near side, and he is shut down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, let's see. Number 44 right there, uh, Todd Richardson, uh, 6'2", 255-pound linebacker. Again, Western Buckeye League, most of those guys are playing defensive line. Right. Um, he comes you know, into looks your like picture pretty quickly. Looks like they had a good play kind of going on, but... Uh, you see on those plays, normally you do what's known as a combo block, which you're double teaming and you want to uh, shed one of those guys off to the linebacker. Second down to 10, and Richardson nearly picked off that pass by Gibson. But just kind of finished up my point from the play before. So normally you double team, and then one of the guys slides off to the next level and get that linebacker because they're – linemen are so big they just demand that double team to stay there no one was able to get off to that second level in the linebacker there you see Richardson sliding over to get the path of that ball and on that play they were trying to kind of fake the uh, the bubble screen and hit the seam route instead and just didn't get it third 10 coming up a minute 18 left they lob it out to the near side and a halfback pass to the and it is tipped and incomplete they were looking down the near side intended for Kraft Johnny Crawford with the pass. You know, when you are, uh, you know, the underdog, you come up with plays like this to try to even the score a little bit. And, you know, Kraft did have, you know, a window where it was open. Uh, ball wasn't really thrown, you know, on a, enough of a line to kind of get there on time. And uh, the Rams were able to withstand that play. Holtz Apple will come on to kick it away on a fourth down to 10. He gets a good foot into it. It'll hit at the 34 and roll down inside the 25, inside the 20 now, and down to the 16, 17 yard line. So maybe the most effective part about that punt was that it didn't get in the hand of Mobley because, okay, with 58 seconds left and the Rams up 13 to nothing, we'll take a quick break. You're listening, excuse me, you're watching High School Football Playoff Action on Game Face Ohio. Book your next getaway at tripsportstravel.com. Find great deals on cruises, flights, yeah, hotels, rental cars, minute. everything you need for your dream vacation, right here at tripsportstravel.com. Tripsportstravel.com. Save more money. 58 seconds left in our first half, and the Rams of Trotwood on top, 13 to nothing. They have the ball, and Simpson rolls out to the near side. Oh, he no. will fire it deep down the left side and incomplete. Intended for Mobley, and that would have been a big one had they connected. Yeah, a bullet dodge right there. Freshman Cody Morgan uh, bit on the fake, was coming up and giving up his deep half. They're in a two deep. Um, and Coach Fry, you know, kind of going to bring him over here just to kind of talk to him, remind him. Uh, you can see him biting up, and, and definitely in this situation, you got to keep people in front of you. Uh, that would have been a backbreaker of a, 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 a touchdown pass because that would have been an easy six. He could have walked in. Yeah, Mobley's not a guy that you are going to catch up to because he has the speed. He lines up wide to the near side. One receiver wide to the far side, and Simpson will be under center with 51 seconds left and a half. Second down and 10, and the handoff to Green. He goes off the right side, up across the 20, and up to the 24-yard line. Green, 
So a third down and about four coming up. Now, Coach Douglas uh, still feeling pretty aggressive right here and feeling good about his chances using a timeout here with 40 seconds left, even though they're, you know, at their own 24-yard line. Yeah, this is a Trotwood team that can, uh, they've shown they can score from just about anywhere on the field. Yeah, and they're, uh, they were conference champions. Uh, they, they compete in the Greater Western Ohio League, the G-Walk, and they actually have that split to several divisions, and they're specifically in the North Division. Uh, some of the teams that they play in their division are uh, Butler, Sydney, Troy, and uh, Piqua. Uh, so they're used to playing in this stadium. In fact, Piqua was their closest game this year uh, where they were only won by three points, 26 to 23. Uh, most of their other games, you know, they usually score in the 40s. Uh, and yeah, they average 43 points a game. But as you noted in the, before we were on the air, they have not shut anybody out this year. No, teams have been able to score against them, and really only two teams have only scored once. Uh, so actually three teams with Ross in the playoffs. So, you know, they do give up some points, but the Redskins got to be able to capitalize on that. Simpson will work out from under center. He has an eye formation behind him and a receiver to each side with 43 seconds left. It's a third down and three for Trotwood, and it, the pitch goes to Green. He comes to the near side. Hit as he gets to the 25 and pulled down. He'll get first down yardage up to the 28-yard line. Out of that formation, anytime you see short motion from that outside receiver, if it's a run, it's almost always going to be sweep that side because he's going to execute what's known as a crackback block, which means he's going to block you know, one of the linebackers that's trying to flow to the outside. And for Green, that's going to put him over 100 yards. Simpson to pass to the right side, caught near midfield. Up across the 50 and into Redskin territory to the 48-yard line is Dalen Bird. Yeah, big play. Um, there's still tw only 20 seconds left, and uh, they will use yet another timeout. Trotwood trying to add to their 13 to nothing lead as we take another look at this one. Simpson looks very athletic as he rolls out here. He's athletic, getting some late pressure on him, but that was plenty of time uh, for Bird to be able to find, uh, you know, the gap in the zone. Uh, you don't want to give up that big of plays. However, with 20 seconds left, you know, the biggest thing is to keep people in front of you, get them down in the field of play. Keep the clock running as much as you can, because uh, that at least forced them to use a timeout here, even though the clock did stop temporarily for the first down. Right, and for a uh, Walpock, any, any play that doesn't end in the end zone is, is going to be a good one here. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, they've already missed a, a PAT. They had an opportunity where they might kick a field goal, and they decided against it. So you have to feel that unless you get really, really close, you know, the only way they're going to score is by putting the ball in the end zone. So keep the guys in front of you. And we see so. the mascot, the Ram. Probably the warmest person in the stadium. <laughs> Next to us. Right. Yeah, walking in here tonight, I was very glad to be in the press box. Simpson will work out of the shotgun. Five receivers on a first down and 10. He is back to pass. Fires it over the middle, and he short hops his intended receiver. He was looking for Bradley over the middle. But you're seeing a little bit. We saw this earlier on that first play, or that first drive, where they had a guy go in the middle, and there's that dead spot, that gap right in front of uh, you know, the free safeties, and, and that is a little bit of a, a weakness in this defense. Play Although, again, in this situation, you would give that up. Play only took three seconds off the clock. Again, over the middle. This one caught by Bradley. Across the 30, still at his feet. And he will be wrestled out of bounds near the 20-yard line with eight seconds left in the half. Well, that's a killer because he caught out of bounds. If you were to take him down immediately, it wouldn't have been a, a real big deal. Now they're probably going to get at least two snaps off. So with eight seconds left, we want to remind you that the time that you see on the on a scoreboard here is the unofficial time. So Simpson now back to pass, fires it over the middle of the field, and it's caught by Mobley. And he's going to be stopped as he gets to the 10-yard line. He's going to shook off that tackle. And I think the Troutwood fans were disappointed that they would not let that play continue. But that is the final play of the first half. And as we go into halftime, the Trotwood Rams with a impressive first half offensively lead 13 to nothing. 
You're watching high school football playoff action on Game Face Ohio. What you looking at, Michael? Oh, relax, Sherry. It's nothing that you'd be interested in. I wonder what he's been doing on the internet for so long. He's got to be up to no good. <laughs> okay, okay. Here you go, Sherry. Happy birthday, dear. Call TSC for Bright Lightning High Speed Internet today and surprise your wife. That is, if you can. Tailgaters drive through located just south of Lincoln Avenue on Defiant Street, has the best pizza in Wapakoneta. Tailgaters drive through is hot food, cold drinks. Tailgaters drive through on Defiant Street. We've got what you're looking for. you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. Let Amy Holdgree Photography capture those special moments with the ones you love. Visit our online gallery at amyholdgreave.com. Owen Kitchen and Bath Showroom has been family owned and operated since 1990. We can help you from start to finish with your entire project. Let one of our professional designers put the final touches on your project. Owen Kitchen and Bath now has two showrooms to better serve you in Wapakoneta and Lima. Owen Kitchen and Bath, cabinetry that will take your breath away at prices that won't. Book your next getaway at tripsportstravel.com. Find great deals on cruises, flights, hotels, rental cars, everything you need for your dream vacation, right here at tripsportstravel.com. Tripsportstravel.com. Save more money. SAA provides excess catastrophic accident insurance for student athletes participating in all 24 OHSAA sports, as well as student managers, trainers, and cheerleaders. Unlike most other states, this coverage is provided at no cost to OHSAA member schools. And while we wish there was no need for such coverage, it provides peace of mind for students, school officials, and parents. in Alexander Stadium here in Piqua. We're at halftime. Trotwood up 13 to nothing. As you take a look at the Wapak High School Marching Band performing a halftime show with no theme, is, I, is my understanding.
All right, the Wapak High School marching band performing here at halftime. And Trotwood with the lead 13 to nothing. You are watching high school football playoff action on Game Face Ohio. Looking for an easier way to pay the bills and balance the budget? There couldn't be an easier way than with TSC's Total Talk Plus. With Total Talk Plus, you can get Total Talk Plus basic cable total talk plus high-speed internet or total talk plus basic cable and high-speed internet with costs starting as low as $59.95 per month it doesn't get any easier than this talk soon for over 100 years the Stolly insurance team has been looking out for you we have access to major insurance companies all over the country and together we can customize an insurance program that will offer you the best coverage for the best premium. Let us look out for you. Give us a call for a personalized proposal today. Proudly featuring Motorist Insurance, Stolly Insurance in Lima, Walpawk, Salina, and Lakeview. Representing Motorist Insurance Group and other fine insurance companies. Stolly Insurance. Nearly 350,000 students in grades 7 through 12 across Ohio participate in 24 OHSA sports. The association sponsors high school state championships in 12 boys sports and 12 girls sports. In all sports except football, every school has the opportunity to participate in the state tournament. Competing schools at regional and state tournaments are reimbursed for some tournament expenses. And unlike many other states, Ohio schools do not pay a membership fee to belong to the association and do not pay tournament entry fees. In conjunction with tournament managers across the state, the association works diligently to provide memorable experiences for students, parents, schools, and communities. So join us in celebrating school sports in Ohio. Touchdown Friday. Brought to you by TSC. GA Windsor and Son. Stolly Insurance. Owen Kitchen and Bath. And Tailgaters. Back here at Alexander Stadium in Piqua. 
on a cold night, but a good football game going on here as the Trotwood Rams lead 13 to nothing at the half. And it's time now to take a look at our first half statistics in a first half that was dominated largely by the Trotwood offense, Paul. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, you look at the, you know, the, the total yardage, and it's not even close, 289 yards to 55. Uh, you know, you really have to feel pretty fortunate if you're the Redskins to only be down 13 points. Um, you know, if you're able to get a stop here as uh, the Rams will get the ball here to start the, uh, the second half uh, and, you know, have the ball down two, you know, you'll be in good shape. You know, they, they lead the time possession like they want to. Um, however, you know, they do need to finish some of those drives in the end zone. Yeah, that time of possession hasn't translated into any, into any points. However, I guess you can look at it as a, as a defensive uh, statistic. Well, that's, what's the, that's what they have to have to get in the game. You know, for them to be in the game, they have to dominate the ball on the offense, and then they have to finish with points. It keeps the Rams off the field and keeps it a lower scoring game. Again, their only close game of the year, the final score was in the 20s, and that was the lowest scoring game of the year for the Rams. You want to take a look at uh, individual statistics here for the first half. Yeah, uh, passing, uh, first of all, for Trotwood, Simpson has uh, thrown 19 times, only completed eight of them, but does have it for 134 yards. His uh, top target has been uh, Bradley, who has three catches for 52 yards, and Bird also has three catches for 35 yards. Uh, Burroughs had that one really long 39-yard reception. Uh, rushing for uh, Trotwood, uh, Green leads the way just over 100 yards with eight carries for 101 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Ashlyn Jackson also has a touchdown on five carries and 30 yards. Going over to Walpock, um, you know, they're three for five, Gibson is, and they also had a halfback pass from Crawford that was incomplete on a double pass, I should say. But they actually have negative yards uh, passing because of, you know, being just tackled on those uh, bubble screens. So net minus nine yards total passing. Um, rushing Pickens uh, does have 11 carries for 50 yards, but, you know, that's really kind of skewed a little bit because he had that 130-yard run. So you take that away, he has 10 carries for 20 yards. Yeah, and not a lot of other contributors offensively for the Redskins. Uh, Wendell with a couple carries, but only five yards. Uh, and Gibson has had five carries running the ball, but only able to get, you know, three positive yards out of that. So that's... Uh, Tells the story statistically. I think that the the Redskins feel probably fortunate to only be down 13 to nothing here at the half. We are at the half of our broadcast, and we'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll take a look at highlights for the first half. You're watching high school football action on Game Face Ohio. The Tailgaters Drive Through, located just south of Lincoln Avenue on Defiance Street has the best pizza in Wapakoneta. Tailgaters drive through is hot food, cold drinks. Tailgaters drive through on Defiance Street. We've got what you're looking for. Owen Kitchen and Bath Showroom has been family owned and operated since 1990. We can help you from start to finish with your entire project. Let one of our professional designers put the final touches on your project. Owen Kitchen and Bath now has two showrooms to better serve you in Wapakoneta and Lima. Owen Kitchen and Bath, cabinetry that will take your breath away at prices that won't. you see an orange truck, you think G.A. Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange G.A. Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because G.A. Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, G.A. Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange G.A. Windsor & Son truck, think green.
Let Amy Holdgrieve Photography capture those special moments with the ones you love. Visit our online gallery at amyholdgrieve.com. Book your next getaway at tripsportstravel.com. Find great deals on cruises, flights, hotels, rental cars, everything you need for your dream vacation, right here at tripsportstravel.com. Tripsportstravel.com. Save more money. SAA provides excess catastrophic accident insurance for student athletes participating in all 24 OHSAA sports as well as student managers, trainers, and cheerleaders. Unlike most other states, this coverage is provided at no cost to OHSAA member schools. And while we wish there was no need for such coverage, it provides peace of mind for students, school officials, and parents. For over 100 years, the Stolle Insurance Team has been looking out for you. We have access to major insurance companies all over the country. And together, we can customize an insurance program that will offer you the best coverage for the best premium. Let us look out for you. Give us a call for a personalized proposal today. Proudly featuring motorist insurance, Stolle Insurance in Lima, Walpaw, Salina, and Lakeview. Representing Motorist Insurance Group and other fine insurance companies. Stolle Insurance. It's your special day. Remember it forever with Premier Event Concepts, professional event and video production. Let us tell your love story. The Ohio High School Athletic Association is a voluntary, nonprofit association of more than 830 public and private high schools and approximately 850 seventh and eighth grade schools. Member schools vote on rules and regulations pertaining to eligibility, scholarship, and many other issues. Sometimes we have to make tough decisions to enforce the rules, but that's just part of all the things the OHSAA does to make sure Ohio school sports are fair, safe, and fun for everyone. What you looking at, Michael? Oh, relax, Sherry. It's nothing that you'd be interested in. I wonder what he's been doing on the internet for so long. He's got to be up to no good. <laughs> okay, okay. Here you go, Sherry. Happy birthday, dear. Call TSC for Bright Lightning High Speed Internet today and surprise your wife. That is, if you can. Welcome. TSC Touchdown Friday. Brought to you by TSC. GA Windsor and Son. Stolly Insurance. Owen Kitchen and Bath. And Tailgaters.
Back here at Alexander Stadium, halftime. It's 13 to nothing in favor of the Trotwood Rams as these two teams come back out to do the warm-ups before the start of the second half. And Paul, we watched the highlights there of the first half and it was clearly uh, dominated by the guys in the black jerseys because they have an outstanding first half offensively. Now, that didn't translate into as many points as maybe it could have, but uh, what does Wapak need to do to slow down this offensive team? Well, I really think that this first drive is going to be the most important possession of, you know, the game um, because the Rams will get the ball first, and if they're able to go down and score and go up three possessions, I, I really don't think the Redskins will be able to kind of come back and be able to win the game. If they're able to stop that team and get the ball back and are able to put a possession together and end in points and just prove it to themselves that they can score points on this juggernaut of a defense, um, you know, that changes the whole outlook of the game. Plus, you know, it's kind of like that puncher that, you know, is the heavyweight, he's big, tough, and all of a sudden he gets hit and bleeds for the first time and realize that he's mortal. Um, you know, Trotwood doesn't feel they're mortal yet. You know, they, they, they're still 13 nothing. They're a big, bad, number one team in the state, and, you know, rightfully so. Um, but until the Redskins can prove that they can stop them and score on them, you know, they're, they're going to continue to feel that way. So, you know, th this beginning possession is really kind of going to spell how this game's going to play out. Okay, if you're uh, Coach Fry, you're in the Wapak locker room. You've watched what your offense has been able to do so far. They're, they're obviously kind of a one-dimensional offense to start out with. And the passing game has been negative in the first half. What adjustment do you make there to get off the offense going? Well, what you need to do is you, you need to, when you are undersized, and again, it's hard to believe that Walpock is undersized, but just to get the monster size of defense that uh, Trotwood has, you know, you need to work angles is what you need to do. Because if you try to straight off block someone that's bigger and stronger than you, you're going to get stoned, and we've kind of seen that in the first half. So if you start to work some angles where you're going to block down and do some, get some double teams, you start pulling your guys and creating some angles, you know, you might have a better chance for success. But when you get double teams, you've got to get movement with two guys, okay? If you've got two guys and you can't get movement, you know, you're not going to get a successful running game going. What uh, other ways can they involve Pickens in the offense besides just the handoff up the middle? Well, you know, that's pretty much his game. You know, he, he's a bulldozer of a runner. Uh, given the right circumstances, you know, he can hit a big play uh, against you as we saw earlier, you know, however, you know, they, they need to open some holes for him. Um, you know, he's not going to see a whole lot of arm tackles that he normally kind of easily goes through. Um, you know, he's been running in some big old bodies that are just as big, if not bigger than he is. Um, so, you know, he's going to get his carries, but really the offensive line, which has done a tremendous job all year long and, and just been so great in, in the Western Buckeye League, you know, they're going to have to be challenged uh, to be able to try to rise to the occasion to, you know, to score on this number one team in the state. Trotwood won the toss to start the ball game, and they will, and they deferred, so they will get the ball to start the second half here. The Skids will kick it away as the second half gets underway. Lo low line drive kick, and flags come out. Yeah, uh, Walpock was offsides on the kickoff. So immediately a, a negative play for the Redskins, not what they want coming out of this halftime break. Yeah, but it shows what the strategy is. You know, they don't want to kick the ball deep and, you know, set up a possible big return with the, you know, the athleticism of Trotwood. Uh, so they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Uh, hopefully that limits the return. And, you know, in a perfect world, you know, maybe it bounces around uh, off – you know, one of their players. We actually saw all that happen in the Walpock St. Mary's game where, you know, opening kickoff the second half happened to just bounce off, you know, the front line of, um, the, of the kick return team. You know, that's obviously the best case scenario. Uh, you know, funny things happen when that ball starts to bounce. You know, it's definitely not a round ball. Well, one thing we didn't see in the first half was turnovers, and that's something that Walpock needs to maybe create. And I think if they continue to pass the ball, that's their best chance to be able to get, to get a takeaway. Here's a return up across the 35 and a lane across the 40 to the 45 and up to the 46-yard line. And a nice return by Deshaun Gay. Now, only a freshman playing for this team, um, you know, making a big play. And great field position for the Rams. 
Uh, but the most important thing now isn't so much the field position, which is kind of unusual. Uh, the most important thing is getting a stop and getting the ball back while continuing to have 13 on the board for Troutwood. Well, and Troutwood has shown not only are they extremely talented, but they have a lot of depth. Simpson under center. He will back, uh, drop back to pass, and he fires it deep to the right side. This one intended and incomplete. Caught out of bounds by Mobley. Mike Simpson's pass intended for Trey Mobley. Yep, uh, Kraft again in good field position. Mobley makes an adjustment. I'm not sure if it was thrown this way on purpose, but threw it to the outside shoulder. And if he had just a little bit more room, it would have been a successful pass reception. Um, again, I still think this is the best scenario. If they continue to call passing plays, you know, there's a, there's a chance for, you know, an interception. Plus, you know, they have a lot of incompletions, which is a lot better than what they've been getting in the running game. Here's the handoff. It'll be green to the near side, across midfield to the 45, into the 40, and knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 38-yard line on the Redskins side of the field after picking up another first down. Yeah, defense, uh, the offensive line, again, really asserting itself. You know, the person that sticks out the most is actually the fullback, Darren. He's just he's such a big dude, seeing him move. Uh, but, you know, you can see him, you know, hit Connor Metz, who's a tough kid, you know, in and of himself. But he's given up, you know, about 80 pounds in that matchup. Here you see Green on a first down carry. And that and the ball, ball is loose. loose. It was kicked around a long time, and it looks like it finally ends up. The Redskins are, are pointing that they have it, but no official indication of that yet. Still no official indication. Well, we're waiting for the official indication about right. the ballpark defense is celebrating. Almost all of them are on the sidelines already, and there it is. There. <laughs> Boy, did that take a while. And here's the Take replay. another look at it here. And this is what they need. They needed takeaways. I thought it might be on interceptions, but this time they were able to strip the ball. Didn't get a real great look at that. Um, but the Redskins able in that scrum to come away with it. And the most important possession going into the game, they're able to get the stop, this time on a turnover. Field position isn't the greatest, but you're at the 31-yard line. Start stringing some plays together. Right. Build on this momentum. And... And in the end zone. The other important factor is is that Simpson and that offense are over here on the sideline. Handoff, counter Pickens off the right side up to the 34-yard line. A gain of about three on the play. Three is the magic number. That's got to be the minimum. You can get another one three yards. And that one of them has to be four. But continue to move the chains. And quite frankly, Doug Fry in this type of situation relishes a little bit in playing the underdog. Even this position, if he was able to get two, three-yard gains out of fourth and one, I'd almost guarantee he'd go for it. Gibson under center on a second down and seven. Here's the handoff. And this play diffused in the backfield as Pickens gets back to the line of scrimmage. But... Not much else. Yeah, number 31, Wilkinson, uh, 6'3", 226-pound sophomore, doing a tremendous job at the point of attack. Uh, didn't give up any ground, in fact, pushed um, into the backfield to be able to disrupt the play. There you see the numbers for Pickens in this ball game. Again, that 30-yard run really distorts his stats, uh, obviously not getting the yards per carry he normally would. Third down and seven. Gibson back to pass, fires near side, and it is caught. First down yardage. Up around the 42-yard line as he connects with Crawford out here on the near side. And that's a big first down pickup, you know, and that's not normally how you would expect, you know, from passing the ball on the third long to be able to pick up the first down. But nice three-step drop, nice hook route, and he ran the route where he needed to to be able to uh, get the first down. And as our stat man Aaron Utrip just uh, points out, that that actually takes them total to uh, minus one yards passing <laughs> um, so they got a little ways to go yet but the most important thing is they move the chains one wide receiver to the near side to hand off to Pickens up the middle he'll get a yard and Mike McCray you know we're, we're gonna say his name quite a bit you know it looked like Pickens under normal circumstances as we've seen him this year that would have been a big yardage play. He would normally have ran through that arm tackle and got into the secondary. But McCray so big and strong, you no, know, he was able to bring down the big guy. Is this a situation where maybe uh, Pickens, or excuse me, McCray is just shadowing Pickens defensively? Well, he's just a middle linebacker in a 4-3 look. You know, he, he's kind of meant to get most of the plays. And when you run the ball between the tackles as much as the Redskins do, you know, he's probably going to make the majority of the tackles. No hole there for Connor Pickens, but he... 
will push the pile up to the 45 yard line. So a gain of a couple, third down and seven coming up. And again, Redskins in a third down and long situation in a, in a situation they've only converted three out of nine opportunities. Yeah, very similar here. They ran the hitch route um, to be able to pick the first down. We'll kind of see what they, uh, Coach Fry dials up. They come out with two wide, one to each side. Gibson under center. He is back to pass, has time, fires it out to the right side. He's got him. And this one is caught. No, they're going to wave it off. They say it was out of bounds on the far sideline. Oh, what a what a bad break there for the Redskins. Kraft was wide open. You know, a, a good pass would have led him in bounds, would have been a touchdown as he was, Kraft was loose up the far sideline. That's the seventh, second time we've seen Kraft get some separation from his defender and the Redskins not able to capitalize on and when it. When you're the underdog, Dan, you, you need to be able to take advantage of some of those opportunities. A lot of pressure there on Holtzapple as he kicks that one away. That one bobbled, and it looks like the Skins have picked it up. And they have. They'll have the ball near the 20-yard line. So two major mistakes in this half of the Rams, and this is the way upsets happen. You know, the favorite team starts to get a little bit sloppy. Two turnovers here, but at some point you've got to pound the ball in but the Redskins have their best field position of the game. Take another look at it. Mobley, who has made so many outstanding plays, lets it go through his hands, and there's Brandon Erb right there on top of it as he slides in to take it away. Brandon Erb, just exactly how you uh, coach getting on that uh, loose ball on the fumble is one of the things you normally do during two days right at the beginning, and then you might not do it a whole lot as the year goes on, but tremendous job cradling that football. 8.29 to go, third quarter, and a first down and 10 for the Redskins in their first real scoring opportunity. This one floated out left side. Crawford back in the end zone, incomplete. Good coverage down there by the Rams. And uh, Rion Dawson there on coverage. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually kind of a little surprised. You know, the Redskins receivers are having some success in, in getting open against this highly touted secondary of the Rams. You know, I'm not, I don't know if they're being taken by surprise. Um, or, or what the deal happens to be, but you know, there are some opportunities there for the taking. They come out with one receiver to each side, Crawford near side to the left, Kraft to the right, and the handoff goes to Wendell up the middle. He's inside the 20 to the 15 and down to the 13 yard line. He's close to a first down. Yeah, that's one of the better runs we've seen on the day for the Redskins, and it couldn't come at a better time on a second and long. You know, some of these pass plays have kind of loosened it up. They're, they're kind of at a man-free look uh, and really dedicating a lot of guys to the run. However, a nice little cutback was able to squeeze ahead and get a big nine-yard gain. This brings up a third and uh, just a little bit less than one. Redskins trying to convert for the fourth time on third down. They have been only successful 30% of the time, but they do it here. And Gibson will keep it for the first down. They spot the ball at the 11-yard line. So the eighth first down of the ball game for the Redskins. And the large turnout that the Redskin faithful, uh, very excited that they can see, you know, they're this close to be able to pound the ball in the end zone. Uh, yet another first down. They can pick up another first down just you know, inside the two-yard line, uh, close to the one-yard line. However, the most important thing is to get into that big blue area in the end zone. One receiver to each side. Gibson with the handoff to Pickens, and he is squashed at the line of scrimmage. And the blitz was on. Uh, and that time he was just stuck in the backfield by number 44, Todd Richardson. Uh, show him blitz all the way and just bring him more guys than they can block. You can see them there on the replay. Wow. Untouched hitting Pickens. Uh, in the backfield, and you cannot get negative plays in this area of the field. That's the second big-time hit we've seen from Richardson against the run. Second down and 12 now. Gibson back to pass. Has some pressure. He's going to step up. He'll fall forward to about the 14-yard line, so he got back to the line of scrimmage, but it brings down a third down and 12. They may have marked him back, so maybe a third down and 13 coming up. And definitely not what you wanted. You know, you're at the 11-yard line, and you have, you know, a negative play, then pretty much a negative play because you didn't gain anything. 
you know, this brings up third and long. Um, obviously, you know, a field goal does you nothing here, so you're going to think four down territory regardless here. So a third down and 14, one receiver each side. Gibson back to pass. Fires it left side and incomplete. In and out of the hands of Crawford. He had double coverage. And they're really, they're, they're running man free. So he was actually single covered, but when he ran that slant, he got it back into where the free safety was. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if you get that same look. You know, a, a fade or a fade stop will continue to kind of isolate him on that island of one-on-one -on -one coverage. Boy, you would hate to see uh, Walpock squander an opportunity like this because basically they've moved the ball only six yards since they uh, scooped up that muffed punt. Gibson back to pass, looking. He steps up to buy some time, Who's fires an end zone touchdown. We have a flag down here on the near side. But as of right now, the Redskins have gotten on the board. We'll see the trial with Madison uh, sideline is kind of pointing it's against the Redskins. We'll happen to see. The officials are conferencing there. I want to applaud the quick reaction time on the flag, though. That might be the fastest one they've thrown tonight. We have an receiver on the oh, that one is going to go against the Redskins. Oh, and, so, and that's tough. You know, uh, you, you had an offensive lineman go downfield. Um, you know, didn't happen to see. Maybe here. we'll see on the replay. You know, when he scrambled, didn't know if anyone went downfield. I, I really don't see anyone ineligible downfield unless they just lined up poorly and had a receiver that was normally supposed to be uncovered be covered up. That's all I can kind of speculate. Yeah. But obviously this brings up fourth down again. Very, here for the Redskins. Very costly miscue. Gibson again back to pass. He fires out to the left side, and Crawford lost it. Went in and out of his hands, and then will give the ball back to Trotwood. Yeah, and they were setting up the old hook and ladder. Josh Wendell was coming around and was going to be pitched to, and he definitely had a lane to the outside. Um, however, he got to make the first part of the play first, which is the catch, and otherwise, you know, two turnovers have resulted into zero points for Walpock. So the Rams will take over first down and 10 at their own 20 yard line with six minutes to go here in the third quarter. And the Redskins with a missed opportunity there. Send their defense back out onto the field. Three wide. For Simpson, who works out from under center, he has two to the near side, one to the far side or left. And he fires it deep down this side, and it is caught by Mobley and run out of bounds in Redskin territory at the 44-yard line. And what a battle right there. Uh, Kraft again in tremendous position. Mobley jumps up, uses uh, you know his athletic ability to go up there and get the pass, and he gets just higher than Kraft does and is able to make a play on the ball before Kraft can. You can see again, step for step, but he's able to just jump up and get it above where Kraft is and Kraft is maintaining his, uh, his running position. And that went in and out of the hands of the Redskins over the middle. Very nearly picked off by Brandon Wilson. And again, you, you kind of feel, you know, the turnovers might have to lead the points. You know, they've had two opportunities, especially the golden opportunity last time where they actually were in the end zone and points got taken off the board. Uh, but again, you want to make that upset, you got to make plays. So a second down and 10 now. Simpson under center. And there's the handoff. It is Jackson with a pickup of two up to the 42 yard line. Third down coming up and a flag down. Yeah, flag thrown in uh, the defensive backfield where there wasn't a whole lot of action going on. So it'd be interesting to see what the, the call is here, Dan. It almost looked like maybe there was some extracurricular going on over there in the backfield, the defensive backfield. We'll see what the call is here. <laughs> so. Personal foul will go against the Redskins, and this, this Paul, you you have to turn this ship around. 
you've had some disappointment to this point, but you can't let it get frustrating. This, I mean, it's only the third quarter. No, and you actually kind of made a nice play right there. You, you can't give the Rams, you know, extra chances because they're going to kill you if you do. Three receivers here, two to the left, one to the near side right as Simpson works out from under center. And he hands it off. Jackson stopped at the line of scrimmage. May have gotten a yard, but not much there. Let's take a look at the replay here and see if we can see where that flag came from. Well, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to because the flag was thrown way off cameras in the defensive backfield. So, um, you know, you got to kind of live in the moment right here if you're the Walpock defense. You know, you got second and ten right here. Um, you know, you try got to keep them off the board to stay within shouting distance. Yeah, they haven't been able to stop the run, at least, on the last couple of plays. Here's Simpson with the play action. Stops, fires it over to the right side, caught inside the 20, down to the 5, and down to the 3 yard line. And another nice reception. And I believe that was James. That's uh, Mike McCray. Mike McCray. Uh, you know, the defensive standout, you know, making his uh, presence known on offense as well. McCray. Well, tight end position. Yep. First out of goal for the 4 yard line. And here's the handoff to Jackson. He's turned away at the two. That first down, the 17th of the ball game for the Rams. But the Redskins have made some uh, some good stops, at least against the run here on this possession. Yeah, uh, you know, defense coordinator Shane Patterson uh, definitely you know changed some sort of schemes because they are definitely defending the run a lot better than they were. However, they they have to desperately keep them out of the end zone. Second down and goal for the three. Four minutes to play, third quarter. Handoff. Jackson right side. And he is stopped short of the goal line. They give it to him at the one. So a third and goal coming up. That big offensive line for Trotwood. And it's going to be tough. You know, they, they really got some road graders on there. LJ Mosley, I've kind of watched him at right tackle a couple times. You know, they're in double tight end power eye here. Just want to pound it. And it looks like Simpson kept it. And no indication that he got into the end zone. No, he so didn't. So, fourth um, and goal coming up. You know, generally, you know, that, that's the call of uh, the line judges. And right away, they didn't give him the signal. And because he went forward and then was pushed back, he definitely was not going to get the call here. Uh, we'll see if they end up kind of dialing up the quarterback sneak again here on fourth and inches. Fourth and goal. Simpson again will keep it. And this time, we see it looks like he fumbled it. And it looks like it's going to go back to the Redskins. That's a huge defensive stop. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, you know, obviously, hopefully our replay gets a good angle at this because uh, 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 up here, you know, you didn't have a great angle. Uh, take another look at it here. He, he lost, lost the, ball the ball going up. Real early. And... Recovered. And you see, Troutwood does recover. However, he's down right. when he picks it up. So he is down. Um, you know, but they're going to have the ball at the one-yard line. However, some flags are down. Yeah, Troutwood's, one of the Troutwood coaches was all the way out at the two-yard line to talk to the officials about that play. And well, as soon as the head official saw him, he saw a flag. Well, there's, it's not like basketball without the coaching box. But, you, you know, the two-yard line's a little bit far. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, that definitely – that. That's break, break, because he fumbles. You know, he fumbles the ball. Wow. He fumbles the ball to keep him out of the end zone, but they still would have had the ball at the one-yard line and right. have to put together a 99-yard drive. This gets them out of jail and puts them at the 16-yard line where it's a lot more measurable, a lot yeah. more manageable. And, it, and I think the official misstated that because the ball wasn't recovered by the Redskins. No, it, it was it, recovered by Trotwood. It, it was recovered by was Trotwood, down. but it really didn't matter in that Eight situation because it was yep. fourth down. So Gibson will work out of the shotgun, and the Redskins are still alive here, trailing 13 to nothing with three minutes to play in the third quarter. Two receivers to the right. Gibson back to pass. Has some time. Rolling out to the right. Still looking. Shakes off one man. Fires it down the right sideline and into the seats. Or excuse me, into the, into the sideline. Yeah, Gibson, uh, you know, in, in a lot of trouble there. It's only a two-receiver route. 
Um, you know, he did have Crawford open on a crossing route, but it would have been a very difficult pass, passing across his body. Uh, he did very well just to get out of trouble and throw the ball out of bounds. You mentioned it earlier, Paul. When we've seen the most success they've had passing-wise have been on the short drop and, and when they release the ball quickly. Yeah, I um, mean, you know, because the longer things go, the more the speed plays in, and the advantage of speed is with Troutwood. Two receivers to the right. Gives it back to pass. Again, pressure. Again, he rolls out to the right. Still looking downfield. And he fires it, and it looks like it was intercepted by Trotwood. And it was. I did not see who it was that intercepted it, but I'm going to guess it was McCray. We'll see if we can. We'll see if we get the replays there, but obviously, you know, uh, uh, turnover on downs uh, that Walpock was able to get, not able to cash it in. A tremendously athletic play. I couldn't really tell what happened, but yeah, that was McCray. Um, <laughs> you know, to be able to intercept the ball right in front of him, you know, tremendous job. First of all, right. for our cameraman to be able to see that individual effort play. Wow. Um, I, I think Gibson guys, did not expect him to be able to get up and get that as close as he was. I wouldn't expect very many people to go up and get that. <laughs> First down and 10 for Trotwood. Handoff, going to the right side. Jackson hit the line and forces his way up to the six yard line. So the Redskin defense has been put to the test once again. Uh, you know, they've been able to come up with a fourth down stop, a couple turnovers. Um, you know, can they dig in once again? Gain of eight on the first down carry. Second down and two. Simpson under center, hands it off Jackson, off the right side, and he is going to break through into the end zone for his second touchdown of the night. Yeah, really working that right-hand side of the line, uh, running behind L.J. Mosley and uh, Jordan Ash, um, you know, able to finally wear down this Walpaw defense and get into the end zone. Here you see Jackson going off the right side. and uh, Nice kick-out block there by Darren Heath on Connor Metz. So he had right around 900 pounds working in front of him there. The extra point attempt is up, and this one is good. So with 2.07 remaining here in the third quarter, the Rams extend their lead out to 20. You are watching high school football playoff action on Game Face Ohio. Tailgaters drive through located just south of Lincoln Avenue on Defiant Street, has the best pizza in Wapakoneta. Tailgaters drive through is hot food, cold drinks. Tailgaters drive through on Defiant Street. We've got what you're looking for. Back here at Alexander Stadium in Piqua as the Trotwood Rams have added their third touchdown. And there you see the numbers for Ashton Jackson who carried it in to cap that drive. And a short drive it was, only two plays, 14 yards, and took 34 seconds. Here's the kickoff. It'll be fielded at about the 12. To the near side, to the 20, to the 25, still on the speed of the 30, to the 40 across midfield, and down the near side is Kraft. Stutters a little bit, and he'll go down in Trotwood territory near the 20-yard line. And that's the spark that the Redskins may need. You know, they've been absolutely dominated yards-wise. Uh, Trotwood has 387 yards compared to only 77 for the Redskins, but you can change that in a hurry with a big-time return that Kraft just got. Here we're going to see an excellent view from our end zone camera as you see Kraft come down the near side. And that stutter step right there, I'm not sure that helped him out a lot, but a nice return by Kraft, and it sets up the Walpock offense. They absolutely need to take advantage of this opportunity here. Yeah, if they have any chance of winning this game, they've got to get into the end zone. Uh, obviously, last possession was a killer. They were in the end zone, making it a one-touchdown game. However, flag for a legal man downfield. 
Gibson with three wide receivers to his right. He hands it off to Pickens. Going up the middle of the field, and he'll get up to the 20, down to the 19-yard line. And that might be the biggest carry for Pickens since his 30-yard run. Yeah, and that was a totally different look, running from that wingback position on the inside handoff. I've not really seen that from the Redskins before, just looking for you know different ways to get the ball in their playmakers' hands. They'll spot it just inside the 20-yard line. And now Pickens moves into the backfield on the right hip of Gibson. Handoff, Pickens up the middle. He's got the 15, backs his way down to the 11-yard line. And a first down for Wapakoneta. Yeah, and ironically, this is exactly where they were in the last possession. They had first and 10 from the 11-yard line. However, they got a negative play, um, and that's kind of set them back, as you can see Pickens' uh, numbers there on the screen. So now the ball spotted at the 11-yard line. 1-11 remaining here in the third quarter. Gibson out of the shotgun. Two receivers, one to each side. Pump fake, and now he'll roll to the right side. Looking downfield, and he'll throw it out of bounds. And he's going to get a flag. Comes down. Again, there's that rule again. You know, you can't throw the ball just away unless someone else is in the area in high school football. Um, there was someone at least within, you know, about 20 yards, unlike earlier. But, you know, there, there's no way that, considering they called it. So it earlier be. in the game um, uh, on Trotwood that they didn't. And for the second time in a row, they had first and 10 from the 11 and were going to have a negative play. Right. And you can see uh, on the replay there, the there were very few options for him. But the killer is, is that it was it's five yards from the spot of the foul, which backs it up all the way to the 25 yard line and the loss of down makes it a second down and 24. Gibson back to pass. Out to the right, and that one is picked off. McCray with it on the far side. Across midfield, and he is off to the races. He is going to take this one back to the house. Absolute disaster. Absolute disaster for Walpock. You know, down to the 11-yard line two different times, not only to come up empty, but uh, he just got to credit McCray. Just a totally athletic play. One-handed yep. to go up and get that. And he's got the speed to be able to uh, take him down the sideline. And Gibson unable to uh, track him down or Pickens. Uh, who almost got him there towards the end. But just an absolute backbreaker for the Redskins who were knocking on the door for the second straight possession. So the Rams will be out there to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up. And it is good. 42 seconds left third quarter, and Trotwood has extended their lead to 27 to nothing. You are watching high school football on Game Face Ohio. When you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because G.A. Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, G.A. Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange G.A. Windsor & Son truck, think green. Welcome back into Alexander Stadium. What a crisp night here uh, in Piqua. What a beautiful facility they have here uh, in Piqua that uh, hosting this uh, ball game here tonight. Trotwood, however, has not made things real beautiful for the Redskins. They lead 27 to nothing with 42 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Here's the return. To the near side comes Kraft. And another nice return up to the 30-yard line. Well, Dan, my, Mike McCray really taking over this ball game. Two very athletic interceptions. One led to a touchdown, and the other one was a touchdown. And, you know, the Redskins starting to think of what could have been, you know, down to the 11-yard line two different times. had negative plays both times. They are able to get the ball in the end zone. You know, either one of those times, especially the first one, and cut that lead back down to 13 to seven, we might have a totally different ball game. Right, and you mentioned McCray uh, 
Did you see him there being yeah. recruited uh, for college ball? And yeah, he has shown well worth it. Yeah. Gibson back to pass over the middle and incomplete. Looking for the tight end over the middle, and he was not able to connect with him. That was Saw Miller. Yeah, when I was in high school, we used to call that a pop pass, where you kind of fake the ball off the middle to try to draw in the linebackers and then try to hit the tight end just past the linebackers. Um, you know, obviously just not able to pick it up right there. A little bit of a tight window. Uh, nice play coming up there by the safety, uh, Bam Bradley. Bam Bradley, we haven't called his name a whole lot, but he is a highly recruited player, and he's actually had uh, two touchdowns the last two weeks on the defensive side of the ball. Second down and 10 now. And here's Wendell off the right side. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and that much there. And that puts Wapakoneta in that undesirable third down and long. Yeah, and just a recent turn of events, a lot of air has been taken out of uh, the Walpock side. You know, the crowd was really into it. Uh, the sideline was really into it. And right now, you know, everybody's just kind of, you know, kind of moping around and, you know, they need something to kind of uh, turn this thing around. Well, time winding down, and we will reach the end of the third quarter. And for the Redskins, they will hope to reverse their fortunes in the final frame. After three quarters of play, Trotwood with a 27 to nothing lead. You're watching Game Face Ohio on TSC. Owen Kitchen and Bath Showroom has been family owned and operated since 1990. We can help you from start to finish with your entire project. Let one of our professional designers put the final touches on your project. Owen Kitchen and Bath now has two showrooms to better serve you in Wapakoneta and Lima. Owen Kitchen and Bath, cabinetry that will take your breath away at prices that won't. broadcast of TSC Touchdown Friday is brought to you by TSC, GA Windsor & Son, Stolly Insurance, Owen Kitchen and & Bath, and Tailgaters. Back here for the start of the fourth quarter. And not much there for the uh, offense there for Wapak as we take a look at stats for the first three quarters. Yeah, and it's, uh, as you see the huge total yards disparity, it's important to know they've run an equal amount of plays. Both have run 48 plays, so I, I don't have the math on top of my head. Obviously, uh, Trotwood averaging quite a bit, average per play a lot more. And that doesn't even factor in that 80-yard touchdown return on the interception. A fourth down and 10 brings up a punt situation for the Redskins. And that one will be downed by the Skins in Trotwood territory at the 43-yard line. So unfortunately for Wapakoneta, the Trotwood offense is back out on the field. Uh, and I tell you what, though, they're, uh, they're, they're talented all the way around. You know, it's really the Trotwood defense has really made some big plays with the interceptions, and specifically Mike McCray. Uh, you know, you really got to be impressed with, uh, you know, the playmakers that they have on both sides of the ball. And, you know, uh, we could talk about McCray all the time. You know, we could talk about um, L.J. Mosley on the offensive line. We could talk about Simpson at quarterback. You know, they just got playmakers and size and athletes just everywhere. Uh, they're very much living up to their ability as the best team in the state. And you could talk about Green, who just carried it out of bounds after nine yards. Green, 118 yards in the first three quarters. And really, you know, you really got to credit Wapak because, you know, they're just a play or two away to where this could really have been a ball game. Um, but, you know, when you're playing against a team with it, that's got some better talent, which, you know, there's no doubt that Trotwood is extraordinarily talented, you know, you've got to take advantage of those opportunities when you get them. Three receivers here for Simpson. He'll hand it off to Green again. He goes off the left side, reverses to the center of the field, and fights his way up to the 40-yard line. 
And a first down pickup on second down into Redskin Terry to territory to the 40 yard line. And 19th first down there for uh, the Rams offense. And they're really exerting themselves on the offensive line. They're getting a lot of movement. You're seeing a lot of guys being put on the ground, uh, you know, by the black shirts. Um, you know, again, just very impressive looking offense here as they try to put this game away. Good job by Green there to reverse his, his field. He shook off a couple of defenders doing that. And penalty flags come down as this play gets underway. That's at least the third false start penalty against Trotwood. All right, let's take another. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why you don't want to be caught. You know, standing around the pile. Yeah. Um. You know that. Definitely That's, uh, want to keep your head on a swivel. You know, you, like I said, it's not a real necessary block, though, either. You know, the right. tackle, the play's pretty much made. Oof. Yeah, that was uh, big Jim Knippen. Who hit the dirt there. Yeah, Green. We gave him that nickname last week, didn't we? We did. <laughs> he ran into a little bit larger lumberjack on that play. So not much there on the first down carry. Brings up a second down and nine. As we close in on 10 minutes to play in this game. You can see a lot of eye formation, uh, tra a traditional pro set here. Simpson with a handoff to Green. He goes off the right side, down to the 35. Hit, still on his feet, fights his way down to the 34-yard line. And nice play there by Brandon Wilson, be able to make the play. Uh, felt like he was getting away from him a little bit, was able to kind of regrip and be able to kind of take him down. First time we have seen that play uh, where they've pulled both guards to go to the outside, and now he's over the 150-yard uh, mark is Green. He's been very impressive in this ball game. And really, I mean, he's got he's got a lot to owe it to you know the blockers in front of him, right. not just the offensive line, but also the fullback. One receiver to each side. On a. Third down and four. Trotwood. Again, this play is stopped before it starts. And Trotwood and I don't will think be they got it up. off on time. So that'll make it a third down and nine. And obviously, Walpock would take it, um, you know, to just make them take up a little bit more. It's the eighth penalty on uh, Trotwood for 81 yards. If those penalties have been uh, crucial uh, for for keeping the game close. Well, they've had some real big ones. You know, if you remember the one time they had it on the punt for Walpock where it switched possession. Uh, again, Walpock was given some opportunities with turnovers and you know fortuitous uh, penalties. However, uh, as we have the whistle blown again, it's going to take a time out. Timeout. But they just haven't been able to take advantage of them and get under the scoreboard. Well, 9.06 remaining in this playoff game, and Trotwood in control, 27 to nothing. You're watching High School Football on Game Face Ohio. The Tailgaters drive through located just south of Lincoln Avenue on Defiance Street, has the best pizza in Wapakoneta. Tailgaters drive through is hot food, cold drinks. Tailgaters drive through on Defiance Street. We've got what you're looking for. Welcome back to Piqua. Trotwood on top, 27 to nothing here in the fourth quarter with 9.06 left to play. Simpson under center on a third down and nine. And he will fire it out to the left side and it is gonna be over the head of Mobley Incomplete, so a fourth down coming up for Trotwood. And it looks like they're going to keep the offense out there. No. no. And this would be the first punt of the game for the Rams. And we'll see uh, their ability to, uh, you know, do kind of make coffin corner punt. 
Taylor Bird is back to put it away. Kraft, who has had a nice return already in this ball game, waits for the kick, and it's a high kick. Fair catch called for. It hits it to five and bounces back toward midfield. It'll be down at the 10-yard line. Yeah, nice punt uh, by Bird. Uh, you know, he's also the starting wide receiver uh, for Trotwood. Um, he, he was the punter last year as well for uh, – you know, Trotwood, as again, they advanced to the state championship game last year, uh, only to come up short. They they have uh, actually been state runner-ups twice, uh, both last year and in 1981, uh, but they have never taken home uh, the big state championship. Well, they look like they've got a talented enough squad to do it this year. Gibson is under center. And he will hand it off as Connor Pickens takes it off the left side up to the 12-yard line. Yeah, Wolfhawks had a real mix of field position. You know, they've had a couple possessions where they've had tremendous field position, uh, you know, on a turnover and a kick return. But they've also had at least, you know, three turnovers or three times where they're inside their own 20 and 10-yard line. Uh, so they've just had a, a lot of, you know, different starting positions. Second down and eight. Here's a handoff to the left side. And Pickens will take it across the 20 up to the 24-yard line. And a first down for the Redskins. They have had some positive place ball, but they have not been able to string enough of them together tonight. No, and, uh, you know, we've kind of mentioned what comes as a surprise. You know, Trotwood has yet to shut anybody out this year. And, they, you know, they've played, a, obviously, a very tough schedule. Uh, but, you know, Walpock is a very, you know, good team. You know, only one loss on the year, to, and that comes to the number one state-ranked team in uh, Division IV. Um, you know, they're ranked 10th in the state. Uh, you know, there's actually a website out there that does, you know, power rankings based on a statistical analysis, and they had Walpock ranked as the sixth, be sixth best team in the state of Ohio. Unfortunately, they just had the bad fortune to match up with the best team in the state of Ohio in the second round of the playoffs. Right. Short gain of a first down brings up a second down and nine for the Skins. And Gibson. Hand off to Miracle off the left side, and he'll get up to the 30-yard line. Gain of four on the play. So a third down and five coming up. And obviously, you know, Walpock, you know, it, the clock's running against them, you know, down 27 points. You know, winning the game is, you know, probably not going to happen at this point. But you'd still love to be able to finish off your season, you know, uh, with getting some points on the board. Here's positive running play up the middle up to the 34-yard line. And Pickens with another carry. He's close to a first down, and they mark it. They will move the chains. And, and in this game, the Redskins did not make a lot of critical errors um, that cost them this game. Well, they had two big, real big ones. You know, the legal man downfield that took away their touchdown. Right. Uh, then, you know, the pick six, which it's hard to call that a mistake. It's just a tremendous uh, play by uh, McCray, who, by the way, as I say his name. <laughs> kind of darts in there, makes the play there in the backfield. Um, you know, Trotwood Madison's the real deal. Um, you know, you're, you're you're playing a really good team. You know, your margin for error to be able to be successful to, to get the win as you see McCray stepping in there and making the play in the backfield. You know, it, it's it's really thin. You know, you got to be able to take advantage of the plays that you make them. Um, but you know. Uh, Walpock just unable to get on the scoreboard. However, defensively, they've done as good of a job as anybody has uh, this year. You know, they've only given up 27 points. Um, they only have 27 points. However, Trotwood Madison, the least amount of points that they've had this year is 26 against Piqua. So this is the second least amount of points they've scored all year. And one of those touchdowns was an 80-yard pick six. So, you know, really credit the Redskin defense for probably doing as good of a job against this team. Uh, Trotwood Madison, as they've seen all year long, mm -hmm. it's just you got to give Trotwood Madison even more credit defensively for slowing down this, you know, pretty you know good scoring offense over the Redskins. Yeah, and the Skins 
just not taking advantage of the of the situations that they were able to put themselves in offensively. And, and you, like you said, you have to credit the defense of Trotwood for for stymieing some of those opportunities. Pickens with the carry brings up a fourth down and two. The ball will be spotted at the 43-yard line. Obviously, the Redskins offense will stay out there. And Trotwood showing the blitz, and you see motion on the far side of the field. Yeah, it looks like they were trying to go on a little bit of a long count to draw off uh, the Rams, and it didn't work as they jumped themselves. And that's going to be a critical five-yard penalty, and uh, Doug Fry... You know, the head coach reluctantly sends on his punt team. So Holt Temple will be out to kick it away. He's had a good night kicking the ball. Mobley back. He's been called on a lot. This will be a seventh punt of the game. Yeah, flag on the play, and it looks like they're going to flag the Redskins for their second false start. In a row. Oh, it, it does stand a bunch. We mentioned earlier that uh, Trotwood had, did block two punts last week, and it looks like they're trying to come after it again. Uh, however, their coach is on uh, the sideline kind of to let them know, hey, we're in punt safe, which means we're not rushing, and uh, they obliged the coach that time. This kick is away, and they let it drop. It'll roll inside the 40 down to the 35. And to the 33-yard line, and that's where... Troutwood will send their offense back out onto the field. Just over four minutes to play in this one. And the Redskins look to be headed toward their second loss of the season. And what should be uh, categorized as a very successful year for Doug Fry and his troops. Uh, certainly, and it's always disappointing. Whenever you're in a tournament situation, which the football playoffs are, only one team wins their last game. And the Redskins have been able to get double-digit wins for, I believe, only second time in school history. Uh, you know, they have picked up the, only their second victory in the playoffs ever in school history last week against Franklin. Um, you know, this is as far as a Wapak team has ever advanced in the playoffs to uh, the regional semifinals. Uh, you know, they have a lot to be, you know, you know, happy with. And remember, you know, this team uh, put back-to-back -back winning seasons together for the first time. Uh, you know, since the late 80s, um, you know, a, a lot to be, um, you know, happy about for, for a tremendously successful season. It's really tough to get, you know, down on yourself when you, you know, lose to potentially the best team in the state. Dalen Bird with the last reception there and a uh, false start there on the, f on the right side of the offensive line. Uh, one of the first things John you can uh, bring up, L.J. Mosley, you know, very upset about himself. Yeah. Um, he might have gotten away with it if he wouldn't have stood there and acted so guilty. Well, you know, um, he hasn't done a whole lot wrong. No. Um, he's, I mean, he's a very good-looking player. Uh, obviously, he's got big, big-time, you know, size at six, th uh, six four. Actually, let me double check here. Six five. Excuse me, three twenty-eight. I short changing him there a little bit. Um, I and won't tell he's it. been moving a lot of guys there on the right side. And the ball loose. It looks like. Loose at the 45-yard line, and it looks like Walpaw has it, and they do. So the Redskins come up with another turnover. And it would be great to see them, you know, be able to get on the scoreboard for, you know, just one little more flash of glory here. You know, a fumbled snap, you know, the, the third turnover here in the half for, uh, for Trotwood. You know, and, and like I said, only one team wins the last game in this situation, but you want to have something to feel good about. You know, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team. You know, you held them to a, a, as low of an offensive put out as there is, but you want to get on the scoreboard. Three receivers to the left for Gibson out of the shotgun now, and he will run it himself. He has a couple of blockers out in front, and he'll get knocked out of bounds as he gets up to the 42-yard line. And I really think that they... Uh, you know, should have looked at the bubble screen there. I know they haven't had a whole lot of success running it, uh, but they really had them outnumbered. They uh, had three receivers out there, and they only had two defenders directly on them. Um, you know, they're really counting on free safety help uh, on any type of pass pattern that they had there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Walpott go back to that look and, and look to throw it to that side. Gain of just two on that first down carry. Brings up a second down and eight. Again, Gibson out of the shotgun. 
Lobs it out left side. Caught. Kraft will take it across the 40, and he's planted as he gets to the 39. A quick screen, and as uh, Aaron Utrip, our stat guy, our guru, if you will, finally told us that it actually does put Walpock into positive yards in the passing category. Um, and, you know, we talked about missed opportunities. You know, we, we thought about the time, you know, where Kraft was open on the, on the sideline. You know, they, they've had some opportunities where, you know, they potentially could have made some plays. Gibson will work out of the shotgun. Two receivers to his right on a third down and four. And a handoff to Pickens. He goes up the middle across the 30 to the 25. Still on his feet, and he fights his way down to the 21-yard line. First down, Redskins. Yeah, and that's classic Pickens that we've uh, kind of seen all year long. You know, not one guy being able to take him down and fighting for some extra yardage after contact. Uh, and again, this puts them in prime time position to almost be in the red zone to hopefully be able to finally cash in and get some points on the board. Paul, you mentioned Aaron Newtrip, our statistician. We should also thank our replay technician, Daryl Schrader, our technical director, Adam Dell, and our producer, Todd Utrip, along with all of the uh, people uh, with the cameras on their shoulders tonight. You see Gibson fighting for yardage. He's got some room up across the 15, 10, and brought down as he gets to the six-yard line. Yeah, that was really concerned. Great individual effort there uh, by Gibson. You know, I was really thinking, well, here they are again, and first down and going to get a negative play, but he was able to evade and make, you know, something out of nothing, tremendous individual effort. And we have an injured Ram down on the field at the eight-yard line. And uh, let's we'll take, take another look. Gibson does a great job of evading pressure. And then gets out to the right side. And there you see a big hit on Richardson. Yeah, it looked like a tight end Nick Sawmiller uh, with uh, the big block there. And I believe that might be the injured player. And obviously you never want to see anybody injured, let alone here towards the end of the ball game. Um, you yeah. know, we hope that uh, the young man's okay. And Richardson has put together an excellent game to this point. He's been on the other end of a lot of those types of hits. 2.06 left here in the ballgame with Trotwood on top. 27 to nothing. And uh, we should uh, thank our, our sponsors as well for uh, supporting the Redskin uh, broadcast all season long. They include GA Windsor & Son, the Stolle Insurance Group, Tailgaters drive Through, Owen Kitchen & Bath, and Premier Event Concepts. So we want to thank all of those fine sponsors for allowing us to bring you this ball game. And it looks like it was not uh, Richardson who was injured on the play. It looks like it was Bradley. Van Bradley. Van Bradley, again, is one of the big-time recruits um, at defensive back, you know, for the Trotwood Rams. It looks like maybe he was the one that made the hit. As we go back to live action here. Gibson will work out of the shotgun here on a first and goal from the five. And it'll be Pickens off the left side. He's going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. And that's, uh, you know, going to feel pretty good for the Redskins. You know, they're going to know that they were able to, you know, put the ball in the end zone, you know, against this tough, tough Rams defense that's just loaded with uh, – you know, players that they're going to be seeing playing on Saturday afternoons here, you know, starting next year. And that touchdown comes at the 149 mark. And Trotwood has gone the entire year without shutting anybody out. There's Pickens. You see him doing what he does best. They are going to go for two here. Gibson out of the shotgun with Pickens on his left hip, and it'll be Pickens to go off the right side this time. And he's going to be stopped short of the goal line. And the two-point conversion fails. So with 1.49 left in the ballgame, Trotwood on top, 27-6. to You're watching high school football on Game Face, Ohio. When you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. 
Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. Back here at Alexander Stadium in Piqua, 27 to six, Trotwood Madison on top, as the Rams are gonna advance to the next round of the playoffs. And they will take on the winner of Kings. Uh, we have Kings, Mills, here. and Turpin. Okay, there you go. Kings And Kings Mills would be a favorite in that game. I believe they were like ranked second or third in the state. Onside kick attempt coming for the Redskins. And it was picked up by a ram, but it's he took a pretty good lick as he as he got that ball, and we'll see if it came loose. It did not. not. And we obviously, uh, for the people have been watching us all year in the Big Kenton matchup. Remember, Walpock made a run at the end by uh, you know kicking and recovering two consecutive onside kicks against Kenton. Right. Uh, so obviously, you know, you're going to make a good run at it. Take a look at it. He had the nice little kick um, in the bounce. Um, just, you know, field cleanly and nothing you can really do about it. And that was uh, McCray, I believe, that was the Ram that scooped it. And you see they're taking a look at him here. Well, let me give you the drive summary uh, for the touchdown for the Redskins. Five plays, 45 yards, one minute and 34 seconds. Connor Pickens, a 60-yard touchdown run for the game. He is now at 25 carries for 115 yards and a touchdown. Okay, well, while they attend to the injured player, we'll take a break here. Trotwood on top, 27-6. to You're watching Game Face Ohio on TSC. Let Amy Holdgrieve Photography capture those special moments with the ones you love. Visit our online gallery at amyholdgrieve.com. Owen Kitchen and Bath Showroom has been family owned and operated since 1990. We can help you from start to finish with your entire project. Let one of our professional designers put the final touches on your project. Owen Kitchen and Bath now has two showrooms to better serve you in Wapakoneta and Lima. Owen Kitchen and Bath, cabinetry that will take your breath away at prices that won't. Final minute 46 left in this game here in Piqua, and the uh, Rams are taking a knee here. Yeah, and that's uh, a coach's favorite formation right there, the victory formation. Uh, Coach Maurice Douglas, uh, you know, very happy to just to see the last, uh, you know, minute plus tick off the clock here as he is going to advance to the regional finals. We should note that McCreary was able to get up and walk off under his own power, and he is standing on the sidelines. He's not not sitting, uh, seating, uh, not sitting down over there or anywhere. So. It's important to know he's only a junior. It's going to be very interesting to see where he ends up playing because he is one of the more exciting players that I've ever seen. Obviously, just totally turned the game around uh, with his two interceptions, and those were extraordinarily athletic interceptions that right. he made. Uh, you know, it's really hard to fault. You know, uh, you know the the quarterback's throws in those cases. You know, you're not see, used to seeing a guy that can just make those kind of plays. Right. Yeah, I think in both both instances, he really got up in the air to take to tip that ball uh, to himself and take it away. So you know, we obviously need to applaud Trotwood Madison. They are fully uh, deserving of all their uh, hype and. Uh, accolades that they've received this year, but obviously let's also congratulate the season of the Wapakoneta Redskins for one of the more successful seasons in their school history. And, uh, you know, for us to be able to carry, you know, a lot of their games this year, you know, it's been very, 
you know, fun season for us, you know, to, to watch a lot of exciting football games and, uh, you know, well-played football. Well, the final seconds have ticked off the clock here in Piqua, and the final score is the Trotwood Madison Rams 27 and the Wapakoneta Redskins 6. We'll uh, come back and take a look at statistics and wrap this ball game up here from Piqua. You're watching Game Face Ohio on TSC. Book your next getaway at tripsportstravel.com. Find great deals on cruises, flights, hotels, rental cars, everything you need for your dream vacation, right here at tripsportstravel.com. Tripsportstravel.com. Save more money. SAA provides excess catastrophic accident insurance for student athletes participating in all 24 OHSAA sports, as well as student managers, trainers, and cheerleaders. Unlike most other states, this coverage is provided at no cost to OHSAA member schools. And while we wish there was no need for such coverage, it provides peace of mind for students, school officials, and parents. For over 100 years, the Stolle Insurance Team has been looking out for you. We have access to major insurance companies all over the country. And together, we can customize an insurance program that will offer you the best coverage for the best premium. Let us look out for you. Give us a call for a personalized proposal today. Proudly featuring Motorist Insurance, Stolle Insurance in Lima, Walpawk, Salina, and Lakeview. Representing Motorist Insurance Group and other fine insurance companies. Stolle Insurance. And welcome back in Alexander Stadium as the uh, Trotwood uh, Madison Rams come away with a 27-6 win here tonight over the uh, Wapak Redskins. And uh, a game, uh, Paul, that the uh, Trotwood offense got going early and they, they stayed active through the whole ball game. Well, they're able to pile up the yards as we'll see here pretty soon with, uh, when we look at team statistics. Um, however, you know, it, you can't help but be impressed by that Trotwood Madison team. Uh, you know, they, they're really a complete package. They can run the ball, they can pass the ball, uh, they got speed all over the field, they got playmakers on uh, both sides of the football. Uh, Mike McCray at linebacker uh, it's, it might be one of the more dynamic players we've seen all year. Um, you know, I, it can be nothing but impressed uh, by, the, by the Rams. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at those statistics uh, for our ball game tonight. As you can see, you know, uh, obviously Trotwood, totally domination with 429 total yards. And look at the balance, you know, almost an equal amount of rush and passing yards. Um, you know, turnovers, you know, could have been a big difference for Trotwood. You know, they turned it over three times. Unfortunately, you know, for Walpock, uh, you know, the first two they were unable to cash in on. Uh, however, the two Walpock turnovers led directly to points. Um, and, you know, when you only score, you know, four touchdowns and two of your touchdowns come off a pick six and off another interception where you get set up at the 20-yard line, you know, that's, that's a really tough mountain to climb against the number one team in the state. And you look at the time of possession, which we talked about as a key to the ball game. Wapak still able to, to dominate in that category as they did in the first half, but not able to turn it into points. Uh, individually, some uh, key statistics. Sure, uh, we'll look at uh, Walpock first. Uh, you know, passing the ball, Kyle Gibson uh, finished the game five completions uh, on 16 attempts, uh, two interceptions, uh, a total net of only three yards. Uh, receiving Kraft had three catches, but minus one. Uh, Crawford and Pickens both had a catch. Uh, rushing the ball led the way as uh, Connor Pickens over the 100-yard mark with 115 yards on 25 totes and uh, one touchdown. Uh, Gibson ended up... Um, chipping in with uh, 23 yards on 10 carries. Over to the victorious Trotwood Madison Rams. Uh, passing, uh, Simpson was 11 for 25, and not really completing a high percentage, but a lot of yards, 209 yards passing. Uh, Bird ended up um, having four catches for 52 yards. Bradley 
uh, three catches for 52 yards. Mobley had two catches. We called his name quite a bit for 44 yards. Uh, rushing, uh, Israel Green led the way with uh, an impressive game, 150 yards rushing on 14 carries and a touchdown. And Ashlyn Jackson, 11 carries for only 49 yards, but he was able to find the end zone twice. Man, so uh, a successful season comes to an end uh, for the Redskins. Um, Paul, your thoughts on the season as a whole? Yeah, like, like we mentioned, we did, uh, you know, I think a total of uh, about eight or nine Walpock games here, you know, including postseason. Uh, you know, couldn't help but be impressed by this squad. Uh, a lot of leadership and a lot of fun guys to be able to cover. Um, you know, Pickens gets a lot of uh, – know notoriety and you know deservedly so but you know uh the big line was always fun to watch uh you know chris schwartz was fun to watch uh lance vetter was fun to watch uh defensively uh you know Kraft made plays Connor metz playing the outside linebacker uh you know miller uh his linebacker spot uh, you know it, it's been really a fun group uh, you know to watch and you know, really see the community kind of rally in and, you know, back this team. It, you know, to me, that's what high school athletics is all about, you know, bringing together, you know, a team for one purpose. And when the community can buy into that and really, you know, it, it's the essence of high school sports. Well, and it's the final game for uh, 13 seniors by my count on this Wapak uh, squad. But there are uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these kids that will be back next year. And there's no reason to think that they won't um, – you know, have a, a, a successful season next year as well. Yeah, and Coach Fry will get those guys in the weight room soon enough. But at this time, you know, it's really about the seniors and honor the, you know, the tremendous leadership and sacrifice that they've uh, given. And we want to remind you all that uh, with uh, football season wrapping up, we're going to take a little break, but we will be back in January to bring you high school basketball, both boys and girls, uh, both Walpock and St. Mary's. So we're looking forward to doing that as well. Um, we want to thank all of the guys that uh, do all of the hard work around here uh, to make these broadcasts possible and uh, thank our sponsors for allowing us to be here as well. Paul, it's been great working with you. Uh, Dan, always a pleasure. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Again, the final score here tonight, the Trotwood Madison Rams end the season for the Wapakoneta Redskins by a final score of 27-6. You've been watching high school football action on Game Face Over.